Hey there, lovely soul. Thank you so much for joining me here today for this read. I am super excited to be here. And um, this is for the Divine Feminine for March 2021. I am recording this on the late morning of the second. Um, the Divine Masculine that I did on the 28th was epically long. A really was like over three something hours. I have it in three separate videos. Um, the Oracle, the actual foundation of the read, and then the clarifiers because it was so epic. Just to review what we did for Divine Masculine, what your soul wants you to know, what we are dealing with and needing to focus on, and then what program issue or trigger that we uh, were looking to overcome or to heal. And then that corresponded to, it's all, it was a tree of life corresponded to um, the like the five pointed star, the human head, arms, legs, and that um, and the elements, but our new element um, brought to us to for us to understand in the new moon meditation that I did that I channeled Gaia. Um, she talked about how tech is an element and we really need to start incorporating that into our understanding of it being something natural. Um, so if you haven't done that meditation, um, it could be done at any time, even though it was for the 27th, you can do that med meditation at any time in a week, in a month, in a year, redo it whenever you want. It's an awesome meditation um, for connecting with that, with the full moon energies, for connecting with Gaia, the abundance matrix, just all this awesome stuff went on in there. Um, I channel the meditations, by the way, so I don't actually like think them up. <laughs> Um, and, um, it was just a really awesome, it was a really awesome, but very long read. And, um, so it looks by views that people are not into that longer foundation or not very many are into that longer foundational read, which is unfortunate because there's just a lot of really good, um, spiritual information there that works with the tree of life and tying everything in. Um, but I get it. Not, you know, not everybody is into going so deep. So, um, so anyway, I knew at the end of that, that we would not be going nearly as crazy deep with the divine feminine. And we're doing something very different with the divine feminine. I'm super excited about it. It's going to be much shorter. Um, Still, my reads are not 15 minutes, and I don't think they ever will be unless I'm pulling like two cards. <laughs> There's just a lot that comes through. Okay, so this is what we're going to do for the Divine Feminine. You're going to have your choice of three reads, and each of the reads are going to have the same cards. We're going to, um, well, maybe. We're going to either have the Heart of Fairy Oracle by Brian Froud or the fairy oracle by Brian Froud, that, that's really the only variation. Other than that, we're gonna get one of the hidden or, or the hidden worlds oracle, um, three of the archangel oracle, three of moonology, and then we're going to do a six pointed star for our read with light seers tarot, okay? With, the, with this theme of, of elemental connections and seeing what we come through with that. And then we'll clarify with some angel or with some angel tarot. Um, and then that's it. And we're gonna do three reads. So this would be your time to decide what are you feeling? Where's your soul calling you? Your guardians calling you? Your guides calling you to which read? Read number one, read number two, or read number three for Divine Feminine. And again, I really, really highly suggest that you watch uh, the Divine Masculine because that's for everybody. Just because this is Divine Masculine doesn't mean it's just for men. We all have our Divine Masculine energies that we need to work on, our Divine Feminine energies that we need to work on and get information from. And, and they're all in, supposed to be in balance. So that's why we're getting, we get information for those, those two separate um, energies differently. I don't think there's any, um, anything random about the fact that the divine masculine one was the big fat epic read. It really shows how important it is for us to 
tune into those energies. And I know that I have more females watching my channel, just more females watch tarot to begin with. So the emphasis on the divine masculine is really out of balance with women. They've just like, oh, that's for men. That's that's if I know a guy, if there's some guy in my life, but no, it's about you, you, <laughs> my dear. And, um, and in, if you don't know this, um, there's another reader, his name is Gareth Hudson, his, um, and his channel is Gareth, Gareth Hudson Tarot, and he's a great reader, has a popular channel, and he's very much, uh, very similar to me, and in, in the kind of things that we're, that we focus on with Tarot, he has a very different um, style and he's very quick and he's a he so he has a little bit of a different perspective but um he's very uh aware and and into understanding and and balancing in the divine feminine in the divine masculine so he has those reads that came out a few days ago and what i found really interesting was that his views i don't know what they are now i had it in check um the last you know 30 something hours, but the last time I checked his views for divine feminine were like 1500 views and his views for the divine masculine, um, read was like 300. So way out of balance, way out of balance there. So it just goes to show where the focus is for you all and what we're, um, what we're, um, where there may be imbalance there. So like I said, no coincidence that my read for the divine masculine was so big, so epic, so involved in so much information, so much to, to, um, to think about there when it comes to this month. And I, again, I highly suggest, I know it's a lot of time, take it in chunks. There's no test about it. You don't have to get it done by a certain time. Just go as guided. But I really, really implore you to watch the Oracle, the long, the foundational aspect going into the tree of life and the hermetic tarot and how it's related to our lives on a spiritual level. And then the clarifiers really help wrap it up. Okay. To get into this one, again, think of your one, two, and three reads, and we'll get into those right now. Okay. You chose Number one, read number one, and here we go with that. First things first, just to get it out of the way, is we're going to pick if we're going to use the fairy oracle or the heart of fairy oracle. And again, like I said in the intro, this is the only variant. Um, so for read number one, for divine feminine, are we, um, I just like to use my pendulum for this, it helps others understand, see what, what we have going on here. And um, so are we gonna use the Heart of Fairy Oracle? Or the Fairy Oracle? Yep, looks like the Fairy Oracle, not the Heart of Fairy Oracle. They are different, some overlap, but they are different. So let's put the Heart of Fairy to the side and the fairy oracle we're just gonna start there how fun we're just gonna start in here and let's start with the fairy oracle so again welcome to this reading for divine feminine energies i appreciate you being here in case you don't know me i'm infinity i am a shaman a mystic a, a psychic physical empath medical medium channel astral meditation guide soul and ascension coach distance healer and divine guided a divinely guided artist i wasn't always an artist it kind of boom came to me very magically so anyway thanks for joining me if you want more information on private reads energy healings ascension coaching please visit my web website thehealingbutterfly.org some cards here with my sage and my palo santo okay let's get to it with the fairy oracle very magical fairy oracle very much connected to the fae trust me and it's no fantasy no no uh <laughs> no games here when it comes to working and and getting and being connected and getting messages from the fae so if you're not somebody who um 
who's you know feels a pull that way that's okay um you know we we all kind of go through these hidden worlds as we're meant to i think the fact that you're here and that you're gonna get this reading may just open the door for you they're very very um connected obviously with gaia they live in a they have a different dimension a different world if you will even though it's all you know they're they're upon gaia they're our closest next realm or kin if you will when it comes to other life forms um you know aside from animals obviously oh boy oh boy here we go first card oh goodness Drop me feeling night. Shit, and it broke. Poopy. That's it. Aw, poops. Aw, oh, now it's a weapon. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, it's not a day if something doesn't break. <laughs> All right. We got the pook card number 60 with the pook. Look at how cute he is. I don't know if you like him saying that, but I think he's adorable. There's the pook. And let's dive in and see what we get with the pook and what our message is. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, the pook. Let's look at the pook for you. Okay, here we go. The pook, shape changer, good and bad, bad and good, paradox, resolution. Page number 166 and 167 and 68, actually. Okay, the pook is a shape changer. He appears in whatever guise he thinks will be most confusing to you, depending on his purpose. Brian, the person who... Uh, channels in the visions of these of these uh, Fae and and is the creator of all of this. Brian says he weaves spells to bemuse our senses and confuse our judgment. He is he is a master of the arts of illusion and delusion, holding up a distorting mirror to reveal the bad in the good and the good in the bad. The pook also wishes to show us the bad in what we think to be good and vice versa. This may confuse us further or it may help us to gain more balanced understanding of how things actually are. He is very against rigid minded sets and in his own way encourages the development of inquiring minds. His true face, I'm not certain what a shape changer even has that a shape changer even has a true face, though he did hold still long enough for Brian to paint him. However, the pook is very proud of the faces he assumes. With them, he offers us contradictions and paradoxes and finds it all too easy to confuse our judgment because we are often not thinking very clearly anyway. Sometimes we even hold two or more contradictory beliefs and boxes in our minds. If one is true, we think when we finally consider them, then the others must be false. Not so. Perhaps both are false. Perhaps both are partially true or partially false. We tend to cling desperately to our beliefs, even when they make no sense to others or are counter to the actual experience. People definitely see what they want to see. <laughs> Our paradoxes are confu and confusions are self-created and the pook need only dress them up a bit and add a little sparkle and dangle them before us in order to induce confusion. In that confusion, we are likely to believe almost anything. Someone, um, almost anything someone presents to us just to feel as if we have a metaphorical anchor in reality. Mm. His challenge for us is to wake up, to stop projecting our confusion on reality. Once we have seen the truth, seeming contradictions and paradoxes melt away. In the matter of realizing the solution to a Zen 
to a Zen cone like, uh, what is the sound of one hand clapping? When we get the answer, usually by a burst of insight, cutting through the confusion and paradoxes, it is always it always seems so simple, and we wonder how we could have been in such a tizzy about something so simple, uh, about such a simple thing. We wonder why um, everyone doesn't understand this so obvious thing. Is that what that said? <laughs> we wonder why everyone doesn't understand this so very obvious thing. Okay, yeah. And it is time for the, resol for the resolution of seeming contradictions and paradoxes in the situation. Someone or some part of the situation is cloaked in confusion and our muddled thoughts must be stripped away, revealing truth. We just need to think about it. And the information we needed is now available to us. And as soon as we have that burst of insight and get it, it's time for us to make changes based on our newly clear understanding. Alternatively, it may be time for us to make a reality check on the, on the good, bad labels we put on things, on the good slash bad labels we put on things. Make a list of the good, possibly even surprising things about the situation. And another list about the bad ones. If you are not in the habit of seeing the good in the bad and the bad in the good, having preferred a black and white world rather than one with colors, you may need some help in learning to do this as well. Um, okay, so now fairies trip you up to give you a new perspective on the world. Hmm, definitely. Okay, so this is about what I'm really picking up here with the pook is, and we'll get deeper into this, I'm sure with the rest of the reading, but what I'm picking up with this is changing your mind, seeing the, the evidence and not sticking to what you think you already knew. Like, this is what I know. And regardless of what is coming at me, this is what I know. Like we tend to, be so rigid in that, right? So that's something to consider um, is, is the need to open up. I'm hearing open up to seeing different perspectives, not just seeing one perspective um, and just kind of raising, raising your perspective, seeing from different perspectives, definitely that good and bad, bad and good, because not ever, it's just like the divine feminine, divine masculine. If we we're all divine feminine or all divine masculine, we'd be out of balance. There's, there's that positive and negative polarity thing happening um, to help us be in balance. So I think that's really interesting. Um, we have this 60 card coming out um, the pook uh, with um, I just keep hearing opening up, opening up to possibilities that you maybe have would not have seen before. Um, seeing how a loss is a gain, seeing how an ending is a beginning, seeing how when things leave it creates space. Um, have, being grateful for for what is the good and and using what may be the bad to to adjust things and also the truth. I'm hearing the truth, the truth, the truth. The truth is can be very complicated. I think is what we just kind of got a lesson in here. The truth is is also a shape shifter. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing him really kind of the message here is that the truth can be a shape shifter depending on your perspective. So if your perspective is low, tight and dark, the truth is going to, to look a certain way. If your perspective is high, open and light, your perspective is going to be broader. So I think that's mostly what we're getting here with the pook. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we round about with the pook some more. Okay, so that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, the Pook. Awesome lessons there with the Pook. I always really enjoy when he comes out because he he's really great at, at, at truly giving us a different, a different look, a different perspective. Okay, let's move on. I'm feeling the um, uh, where am I putting the Pook? There we go. Let me stick you right there. Okay, I'm feeling the Archangel Oracle. Let's get, we're supposed to get three Archangel Oracle cards. Three Archangel Oracle cards for this first read for the Divine Feminine for March 2021. Again, thank you for being here. Hope you're enjoying this so far. Don't forget to like share, please subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any of my reads, my guided meditations, my energy updates. Holy good Lord, we're putting them all back. All of them are going. There's a flying out. Um, and, and yeah, at the end of this, oh, there's our card. Oh, one of them. Oh yeah, we're getting three. Um, at the end of this, uh, please, leave a comment. Let me know how you felt about this read. And um, I love engagement. I love to engage with people. Um, I do keep my comments um, to be held for review. So um, it may just take me a little bit to respond just because there's spam and I don't like the things that come through in spam. So, um, so anyway, but please leave a comment. I love to engage with you guys. Next card and next card. Easy peasy. Gotta love it. Okay, let's put the rest here. Let's turn these over. Sensitivity, gentleness, relationship harmony. Oh, okay, with Haniel. Sensitivity with Haniel. Um, you are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Honor yourself and your feelings. Definitely. I'm hearing kind of get the feels like with the Virgo full moon pretty much starting and ending the month of February, starting the month of March with this full moon energy with um, this being Pisces season, emotions um, are going to be, um, it's going to be easier to, to cry. It's, you're going to be a little bit more sensitive and emotional. You're going to feel really your empathy is going to be even more heightened. So just honor your, your emotions and, and don't, don't get frustrated. Um, I mean, I'm even hearing like, it's sort of like a, like a period month. And this could be, this doesn't, this is just to, for me, to make you understand, this is for men too. So we have the divine masculines, men that have, you know, everybody has, you can't get caught up in genders or, or, or titles when it comes to that. It's, it's either the positive that there's like polarities of negative and positive male and female, the, the, the arrow, the, the bowl, like what, what these different energies are. Anyway, what, what came is kind of like that extra sense that women will definitely understand this. And if any man has been around a woman, you know that there are certain times when we definitely are a little bit more emotional. Things just kind of hit us harder or whatever. And so that came through. It was just like period month, which was really funny. So it's like, be prepared for, for March to be kind of like just, it's just an extended time of being um, really in tune with your feelings, really um, just emotion, more emotional, but you, but not to, not to look at that, like a bad thing. It's a good thing to be in touch with your emotions, but, but it's like clear emotions, have emotions, clear the emotions, be extra sensitive with yourself. You're extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Honor yourself and your feelings. Don't, don't get frustrated with your own feelings, with your wants, your desires, what you're being pushed or pulled to do this month. They're, you're sensitive to energies. It's really, it's like things are going to come in. You're going to be sensitive to those energies. Okay. At gentleness with sandal fine. Be very gentle with yourself at this time. Surround yourself with gentle people, situations, and environments. So clearly this is a thing. So self-care, baths, nice gentle music low energy situations with like not a lot of people um 
uh, again, being patient with yourself, I'm hearing be patient, be gentle, practice self-care, um, breathing, meditation. Um, I'm going to be putting out a ton of meditations this month. I'm so excited about, I'm getting more and more um, information about. And so I highly suggest that you partake of those as much as you can will really help um, get us through this month. And there are really awesome themes coming. I'm super excited about it. Okay. And relationship harmony with Raguel. We angels are opening the hearts of everyone involved. Arguments and conflicts are being resolved now. So what's cool about this is through our sensitivity, through through this like understanding that it's not just one, it's not just one of us or just the one that's going through changes and new perspectives and seeking the truth and wanting to heal and, and needing to self-care and be gentle with ourselves. We need to see that for other people as well. So be gentle with others, um, have a sense of, of, uh, of harmony with others. And, um, And if there has been conflict, if there has been mis miscommunication, mistrust, hurt feelings, um, things like that, just have it in your heart to be open to resolution, that your heart is open to resolution with different people that may, from your past, from your present, whatever it is, that you just have an open heart for resolution, that you, you don't want to, to keep pain resentment, anger, fear, sadness, um, judgment. Um, did I say anger? Anger. You don't want to keep these, these feelings about others and relationships and partnerships and whatever the, whatever the nature of the, the relation could be a neighbor, an acquaintance, a business partner, a romantic partner, a friend, a family member, member any and all of it are energetic connections and they all affect you. Sure. On different levels, but let, let's do this. If there's been a thing, a someone, a something, an ongoing situation where it's just either ongoing conflict or there was conflict and it, there was a break or there's a break and ongoing conflict, whatever that, that the case may be, really to, um, to think about sending out and receiving energies of relationship harmony and to be open to conflict resolution to not it's like a lot of times we tend to need to be right need to be the winner in a situation i was right you know it's like this thing happened and i'm i'm right i'm the right one in this situation where it's like what's better to be right or happy like what's what's more important to be to get along with people to head to either part ways in a nice you know energy or is it better to be the one that you know is right is correct or was wronged and you got to pay you got to acknowledge or whatever you know it's like to me it's better to to be open to seeing different perspectives and acknowledging that it's not just one way to look at something and maybe people act or behave and react in a certain way because of you know the perspective that they're coming from what they're seeing and sometimes it's just the energy of a day that really can alter what we do and i guess that that takes us back to sensitivity it's like be sensitive with with how you feel so you can keep having relationship harmony so things don't go don't get away from you kind of thing okay that's awesome so again relationship harmony gentleness with sandal fun and sensitivity with haniel so thank you raguel haniel and send off on for those messages and then put those over there. Next, we're going to get into moonology again. So here we go with moonology again for this first read for divine feminine. Those of you who chose number one for your 
tapping in with the wisdom, the love, the energy of the moon. Just take a moment here to think about all her beautiful phases. We're just coming out of a full moon, um, full moon energies right now. And we're probably still in the summer 90% or high 80s. I actually honestly didn't look today. Um, okay, this one's calling to me here. Let's put that one aside. This one's calling to me here, and this one's calling to me here. Okay, very nice. You're probably like, I don't see people do piles and pulling. You know what? Anything works. And sometimes I'm guided to do these swirly piles to pull. Um, <laughs> it gets it done. It gets it done. Okay. Don't let your past hold you back. I love this card and it's definitely making a, an appearance. And I think that actually that card did come out in the divine masculine read. Um, a win-win outcome is forecast with um, full moon in Libra. And then we have believe in the impossible. Oh, I love these cards. Believe in the impossible. Okay, don't let the past hold you back. Pretty straightforward. This is about releasing energies that keep you stuck where you are. So I've noticed for myself that that like fear of abandonment is definitely a theme for me. And I've known that for a long time, but I am seeing how it's connected to to just kind of feeling left out or not being paid attention to and just the different ways that that our past can weave its little way into our present and and cause us to feel things that we're not that we feel but we don't really understand like what's the root of this problem so don't let the past hold you back is something that says please take time to discover what what are those, those little, <laughs> I'm hearing kind of rotten seeds. What are those rotten seeds that like, that got implanted, that got planted in your life and watered with it, with a certain type of energy that didn't let it sprout and heal and grow, but just let it fester. And more of that energy is just kind of made it grow and become its own special kind of cancer in your life. Like what, what is it that, that are the, the things that really bother you that when other people do and trigger you. And when you identify what bothers you, then you can reverse engineer that into, why am I bothered by this? Well, this makes me feel this. Well, why does it make me feel that? Well, I, you know, I, I feel like I'm being ignored. Well, why? why why does that bother you that you're that well being ignored you know what i mean so you just kind of go back and back and back and and where did this start why do you feel ignored and just kind of keep asking these questions and you may not get all of the answers like i think i figured out my like root of what my deal was about why i i get so bothered when i feel ignored why I get so bothered. It's like being ignored, being abandoned, very similar, being neglected. They're all those very similar energies. And when you figure that out and you see what, how it could permeate into, into your life and be a block, be a, be a resistance block for your own thing. Well, if you're afraid of, of being ignored and being abandoned, then you're going to be afraid of putting yourself out there to work with Lucy doing art for Lucy. Oh my goodness. I mean, I want to do my own Oracle, but wow, that would be awesome. Okay. Our card here, actually been seeing this card quite a bit lately. Um, the light priestess card number six. Interesting. We got 60 for the, for the poop and we got six for the light priestess this card so beautiful okay so card number six <laughs> right to it 46 and 47 
before you is a temple, a gateway to the realms of light, and it is broken. It is being restored, rebuilt with every moment that you give your own restoration and well-being. As you do this, likewise, this temple will be restored by the light priestess. She who weaves the rays and brings back to us the codes of our origins. All you need to do is focus on the light within and without you. Spend time within the light, the sunlight pouring through your own energetic gateways, the moonlight healing, cleansing, resembling, reassembling every cell. The light priestess will ensure you receive the light that will reignite the cosmic fires within you and restore all that seems broken and in disrepair. She builds the temple of the spirit. And as you build yours, the temple she safeguards will be repieced until it once again is a gateway for the people of this earth to understand their place in the cosmos. Observe the subtle light all about you, the play of light on water, the reflection off windows, the prisms and lanterns and rays that imbue our world and wonder and messages from the depths of the universe. Allow the planets to connect with you. Oh, I just did an amazing energy work session the other day. We connected with the planets. It was so awesome. Um, just remind me of that, sorry. Re-engage with your starry self, your cosmic being, your, your eternal essence that is the light from a thousand stars. You are a temple and you are restoring the gates between the worlds with every offering you make to your own well-being, to your own spirit. Oh, I so love this card. Illumination. Starborn one, your temple is not broken. It is being rewoven from the thousand lights of the far faraway worlds you once were part of. Live this life, but in this moment, remember your origins and the divine path you will take home. Ah, oh, it's so awesome. So this is really speaking to, um taking time to heal, to connect, to connect with light, to connect with this light priestess, to um, feel into the beyond. Um, so if you can just sit in sunlight, sit in moonlight, play, play with light, play with fire, play with reflections, play with how light makes you feel. I am so into light. <laughs> I love candlelight. I love these little, um, probably hard to see them right now because it's bright, but I have all these little twinkle lights all over my house and just light, just a lot of light, every little, but it's soft light. It's easy light. It's inviting light. So you're also being um, encouraged to have and bring in different light into your surroundings. Um, and I'm here, even hearing to do some artwork, just it could be very abstract. Just make yourself in the middle and, and whether it's crayons or watercolor or acrylic or, or whatever type of, of medium you have, just if you if you're inspired to do this just kind of depict yourself it could just be a little blob of, of paint it doesn't have to look like a person just put yourself there whatever colors you feel yourself and then create light with different different watercolor would probably be, be the best just the easiest to you it blends really awesome you know you can just kind of spend forever with the way watercolor moves so i i encourage you to to do that um that that I'm seeing here. So hopefully you'll be guided to do that and and play with and you'll see when you play with watercolor that it reflects the light and you can kind of play with that. But um this is also talking about opening yourself up to otherworldly galactic wisdom as it says here galactic galactic wisdom, cosmic ritual. This is about understanding that so much of you 
is also your soul, what it's connected to, your spirituality, the divine beings that we are connected to, the different places in creation we're connected to, even though it may not seem that way, we really, really are. And, and the more intentional we are about, about just opening up to those energies, the more that they will come. Okay, so thank you so much, Light Priestess. That was beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to show us our little diagram here. What we're working with, our elemental connection, spirit, air, um, water, earth, fire, and tech there in the center. So... And also, if you want, this is something that we did in the um, in the Divine Masculine read was you could pick a number um, of one of these. It was 10 positions, but here it would be six. You could pick a number um, as well. So pick, pick a read, pick a number if you want. And so one through six, so if you want to take a moment and just think one through six, and that could be like the, the message or the, the position with the cards that maybe is more meaningful to you, possibly. Um, okay, let's get going. Spirit, uh, air, water, earth. Oh, sorry, water. Sorry, spirit, confusing myself. Spirit, air, water, tech then earth, then fire. There we go. Oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> These cards are really actually really funny. So for spirit, we have page of wands. For our air, we have uh, two of wands. For our water, we have temperance. For our tech, we have the hermit. And for earth, we have the world. And for, um, now we had two of these come out in reverse. Are we doing these in reverse? No, okay. So temperance and the lovers came out in reverse, but I'm, I'm, I turned around temperance as I picked it up and I'm turning around the lovers too. So they're, we're taking them straight up. So the lovers for fire, which is kind of funny. So we have um, page of wands, two of wands, temperance, the hermit, the world, and the lovers. We have four major arcanas here out of six uh, positions. Wow, that is, that's a lot. Um, okay. So spirit, page of wands. Okay, so we're talking here. We're really, this, this is really great coming from spirit. Our spirit, our elemental connection with, with spirit. Really, um, this card, page of wands. Um, I love this energy, love this energy. It's 1212 right now, so I find that significant. Being same, same spirit saying that the you're feeling and we need that spirit that soul connection same same um this letting go opening up and we really did get a lot of a, a lot of that already with these messages sorry i tend to yawn and get a little shaky when i start to download it's interesting um <laughs> Uh, and here we really want it. She's literally letting go, literally letting go. So we've got this, we got this, um, this message. Don't let the past hold you back. Um, we talked about relationship harmony, letting things go. So believe in the impossible is letting things go as well. 
um, just releasing, releasing, really stepping into yourself, letting go of energy that's holding you back, letting, letting go of the bear. It's like, I literally see this, like this wand, like almost like it was just like stopping. Um, I know that this energy is supposed to look different, different here. Like she's swirling and she's got a wand and it's supposed to be this whole thing. But the way that it's coming through here is like, here is a portal of light and energy um, trying literally to make its way to you and your insides are saying, yes, come in. And maybe there's been these blocks that are just like blocking that. And spirit is saying the fact, you know, that the fact that you're exploring, that you're digging deeper, that you want to release this energy, it will come. And in this month, remember we got the, the information that we're going to be a bit more sensitive with stuff. So we're really going to be feeling energies. I'm really going to know this is where I don't need to be right now, or I'm not going to do that. This is what I need to be doing right now. This is what I, or who I'm around or what I'm doing really sensitive to the energies, really pumping up the empath for yourself and for others as well. So in our, our air position, we have the two of wands. And every time I go to a new card, I get a big yawn. Um, what I'm seeing with this two of wands is with air is, is kind of more of that logical and in the air is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So, um, signs, um, so I'm just thinking this is, I mean, she's very pensive. She's thinking, so it's kind of like, we can see her two ways. We can re we really can see her two ways here. Either she's a little, she's distraught about what she's learning and she's like, uh, I'm not, you know, she's processing or she's planning. It's like these two things that are going on here. But what I do see is this, this, this window with all these different panes of glass here. And, um, this is reminding me of, um, of our abundance blocks, our, what can come into us and being behind it, being blocked by it. Like, like our, like our own, like, you know, it's like your own, like your own enemy, like getting in your own way kind of thing. This is kind of what that feels like, like getting in your own way, like not like there, like it's the windows are see-through clearly, obviously windows, the point of windows is to see through them. She's sitting in front of the window so she can see through it, but still there's windows there. There's a block there that's not open. You can see through it, but you can't walk through it unless you want to get hurt. So this is about, again, clearing the blocks from our mental, from where we come, come in logically, you know, that whole believe in the impossible thing. So this is about like being told some things, being, being aware of some new things and then being like, oh, that's not what I thought. And then processing and then, and then planning. So it's in this like uh, stage of development. Um, okay, and then temperance is our water, our water position. Temperance is our water position. Um, and again, balance coming in here, needing to balance. We, we see this angel here with that, with the sun and the moon um, energy here and really needing to balance that those, the divine feminine, the divine masculine. Um, and with the water element, what I'm seeing with this is uh, really using water as 
for clearing, for healing, really getting in, being around water as much as you can. Um, I know I say this a lot in my reads, if, especially if they come out, but it's just a thing. Obviously, the element of water is so healing. And this temperance card is really coming through to me like about healing, about needing to um, give yourself that time, that space to accept healing in and the process of it, being patient for, for your healing, for your processing of what you knew. Because it's kind of like when we go through a spiritual awakening, it's, it's not just boom, you, you're spir spiritually awoken. It's a process. It's levels and layers to be pulled back and deconstructed and reconstructed again and again and again and again, depending on your trajectory and, and, and all that stuff. Um, and it's interesting to have this hermit here in the middle. Um, and the reason why we have this middle position and tech being that middle position is because tech now touches everything about our lives. And, um, and we have this hermit, this hermit card coming in um, for tech. And I find that really interesting because, because the hermit, a lot of times it's like, oh, solitary, alone kind of energy. When the kid, when, when really the kid, case with the hermit is when you think about it, it's he's up there or she's up there. Um, that is a female, but um, up there and, and with this light shining. And so what that basically says is, and it's interesting with that coming in for tech, it's perfect because tech is saying, think of the possibilities. Technology is just like possible. We, we see from in five years, what happens, what changes with technology. So technology is very much a believe in the impossible type of element. The hermit is saying, follow my light. For the ones who come, I'm up here on this mountaintop, but I, I have a light on for the ones who come behind me. So, so you may understand and you may, you know, follow in my, in my light. So it's easier for you. Um, and it's, and what's interesting is if we typically mix water and tech, we'll have some broken tech in this sense of the elements and it being within us, this is saying, um, especially here, we have temperance, temperance on this right side of the star saying, or this left side of the star, depending on how you're looking at it, um, is is coming to us and saying, we need to heal, we need balance. And tech in the center that's connected to it is saying, yeah, and I'm the light. And in this day and age, technology is something that can is used for, for health and healing all the time. So um, to follow the light of technology and see where that can lead you as far as, as healing, and that's a lot. Um, but in its own right, the water element connected with temperance and that need to balance. So um, the need to go into water to balance and to understand with this tech position, I know I'm kind of blending these two, but with this tech position, with the, with the hermit coming in here, um, really wanting us to see tech from a different perspective, especially maybe as I'm not saying that females are the divine um, feminine, um, however you identify, aren't, we're not into tech or that's not a thing, but, um, but a lot of the ways that, that we can look at tech and just be very, um, passive. And like, for me, I use tech to do my healings. <laughs> um, and I'm always talking about water with people, but tech is an integral part of what I do and how I heal people because I connect worldwide with people over Zoom. So, and through email and my website, and if it wasn't for technology, my whole world with my, with what I do to heal people and animals would be so, so tiny. So it's like tech is like saying, you know, to, to really revere it as this beautiful element in our development and in uh, what, and to expand, I'm here. Okay, hold on. 
okay, two sides here. If you're somebody who's a messenger who's putting stuff out for the collective in any way, um, a healer, your writer, a healer, an artist, a, 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 a psychic, a medium, a channel, um, you, you put stuff out to the world to help them, to give them joy, to give them, you know, healing. And there's so many different um, titles that that could be. But anyway, if you have, def if you, if you um, identify like that in whatever way, then um, it's to expand your awareness of what's out there that can help you with what you do using technology how can you get up there and show people your light and what you do use technology and i know for myself there's platforms and websites and apps and stuff that i haven't utilized that i because either it's too much it feels like too much it's overwhelming i don't know how to use it what do you do with it how does it integrate with everything else and especially for us older generations like you know if you're in your 40s or your 50s or you know late 40s 50s up or um, it, sometimes we just, we can keep it kind of basic. Um, it's just kind of the way we are. It's like, whatever. <laughs> um, and I know that for myself too. Uh, I really had to be forced into actually getting into social media and connecting and all that stuff because I was very just into my own little world kind of thing. But I was very much guided. No, you, we've got to see beyond this. We got to go out. Okay, so that is something. So, so if you're somebody who you know needs to put stuff out, you really need to start exploring more technology. What is out there? Remember, <laughs> you may be like, "Gosh, this would be so cool if it existed." Well, maybe. It it does and you just haven't found it yet so whatever it is whether it's a platform a website an app some things that that will help you if people have told you about very specific things that like oh you should get on this you should use this whatever and you maybe looked at it or haven't done it or just dabbled a little bit make it a point to go back look at what those things are because our um, guidance doesn't just come from the ether. It, it filters through people with bodies and voices to say things to you, to make you pay attention to what's coming. And a lot of people just, they, they don't listen to, to what is said to help them along. And I know I've done the same thing. People said, oh, you should look into this. And I kind of do. And I'm like, okay, whatever. But, you know, it's something, if it keeps kind of coming back around, that's an indication that that's something to look at. Conversely, if you're somebody looking for guidance or help or, you know, want to support people or you're looking for more information or whatever it is to use on the, on the other side of it, to open and expand your awareness of what's out there as far as technology is concerned and how to get the things that you need or how to connect with people that you haven't, that you think, oh, I'm isolated, no, but I can't meet people or whatever there's I'm just feeling like like if we put forward some effort to see what's beyond just right here then we can get to that okay next earth the world I love this world card for the earth element Taurus Virgo Capricorn um card number 21 of the major arcana the world so let me just tap in here Yeah, this world card is making me feel like there is a, like a, a just a very, I'm getting this very new, <clears throat> very, it like, was so ready on earth, in earth, with our earth element, with so ready to explore to expand if we've been more sheltered more isolated more in in um in hermit mode uh then we need to um and and even though the hermit is is up there with his light saying here i am kind of thing he's also isolated and alone and not intermingling whereas here with earth 
it's like, okay, we need to be in earth and come out into that space and let yourself be known, come into um, places and, and, and around people where you can be seen um, and, and make yourself known in your community, in your world. Again, kind of connecting back to tech, interestingly enough, connecting back to tech with this in the center position with, um, with the world is saying really use tech to come out. I kind of, you know, kind of said that before. Conversely, if you're somebody who, you know, is seeking others, um, help or guidance, but this is kind of more like social, like, um, like, like going, like, um, is there uh, groups, organizations, classes, uh, um, courses that would involve other people, either in the real world around people or online? Now, I know pandi, pandi is something that, you know, really kind of throws things off but regardless people have gotten and and that's a really good point is like you know through this whole pandemic tech has become such an integral part of our lives and um people have set up and designed things differently now than they ever were before to accommodate the new paradigm shift with the pandemic so it's easier to step out ele even electronically than it ever was before just in the last year um like I've been using Zoom for years to do what I do, and most people never heard of it. And all of a sudden, the whole world knows what Zoom is because everybody's had to use it. So it's and people have just had to design just all sorts of ways of doing stuff to to to, to accommodate. So anyway, so this is about being more social, getting out there in the world, or reconnecting with people that you already know in the world. You know, kind of just like like sending your energy out, you know, maybe sending, sending texts or even calling people, <gasps> calling people you haven't talked to in a long time that may pop into your head, just sending out your energy coming, just I'm, I'm hearing just being more social in earth with, with earth. And especially probably if you're a, if you are a Taurus, Virgo, a Capricorn with that, with that earth sign, or if you pick this position, this is telling you this, um, uh, so this would be the one, two, three, four, five, the fifth position. This is telling you that, um, that it's time to do something to be more social, to put yourself out in the world and whatever little, like after this, before that, next this or whatever that you were like, it has to be, has to be, has to be set up a certain way. It's like, you know, maybe just stop procrastinating about it and just do it. Like this is time to just get out into the world. Okay. Our next position, our fire position, the lovers coming in here, you guys, the lovers coming in here with our sit, with our last position, our sixth position. Um, So with our fire, with our lover's card here, what I'm really feeling with this is not so much that like, oh, the lovers, love is coming in or, you know, for those of us that are, that are in a single them. Um, it's about, it's about continuing to heal from, and maybe that's why it came out in reverse from the beginning as I'm kind of remembering, but it's, it's like being ready for a new chapter when it comes to intimacy, partnerships, working with other people. I mean, this picture is extremely sexual and very, very intimate, definitely giving us more of like that, you know, lovers, like traditional, like lover sex thing happening here. But remember, it did come out in reverse, even though we were told just to see it in, I love when my hair gets stuck in cars, it cracks me up. Um, 
But here I'm being told and what I'm shown here and especially comes showing me in reverse again is, but they want us to see it straight up, even though it's, it's like, it's like turning. And so what I'm seeing with this is like, is needing to process out the past and, and our sex love specifically, or very intimate relationships that we had with people could be best friends, could even be um, family members, but that like super intimate type of relationship. But I'm really feeling mostly this is about actual romantic relationships, people you were sexually involved with or really felt a lot of feels for or together with, that you're no longer together with this person anymore. So this is specifically if you're a single person, if you've been single um, for any length of time, that you're not still like really connected with somebody. If you're still really connected with somebody, then it's definitely the, the message is to cut cords. I have an ebook. I have a guided astral meditation all free on my website. I highly suggest that that is taken a look at here because this is what it's telling me with this, with this lovers and it being, and it was in reverse, but it's, it's wanting us to see it right side up for empowerment. Look at how empowered this divine feminine is. Like she's taking control of the situation and you have to see this man as like the other and the other coming in and wanting that other to come in and being super receptive and excited about it, not in fear, not, you know, wondering how he's going to hurt us or when it's going to end or how it's going to blow up or any of that negative shit that we can tend to think about when it comes to others, especially love partners in our lives. We need to, we really need to think about the past. And working through like, like March is like healing month and working through the shit that needs to go that we need to release. Remember the poop is saying, what about these situations is actually the truth. Maybe now's a good time to go back and dissect past relationships because there's time, there's perspective. You can see the good and the bad, the bad and the good. You can heal from these relationships. Gotta love the poop told you it would round all out with the poop. And so he's coming and going, yeah, this, this right here, this is a big one for you people because it's the stuff we hold on to, the fame, the, the fear, the pain, the pain, fame, fame is fear and pain put together. The fear and the pain of, you know, of bringing other people in, the pain of having, you know, people from our past and what that may have done to us, what, how we were treated very abusively or, um, um, in love or, or, or abandoned or, or there was trust that was, um, or promises that weren't kept or, or just vindictive, uh, angry, jealous, jealous, um, I'm feeling very jealous energies that we're still attached to, whether they were our own or other people's, anything that is um, negative, that's associated with, uh, with especially romantic partnerships or deep, intimate romantic partnerships, soulmate partnerships. Um, and yeah, we all have multiple soulmates. So don't get stuck on, you know, just having one soulmate and, or, or that kind of thing. Um, um, but those tend to be the relationships that, you know, kind of cut the deepest, feel the hardest or are hardest ones to get over when they don't work out or when people don't see eye to eye or it's just timing or what have you. So this is really saying, let's take time in this month. Remember, this is a month reading. We're not going to get another, I'm not doing another divine feminine or masculine for the month of, of March. I'm going to be doing other things. So this is really specifically um, divine for our divine feminine aspects. And ever, this, is, this is for everybody. These messages are for everybody, but really taking control with that divine feminine aspect that can tend to be more meek and repressed when it comes to, um, you know, our relationships or, you know, putting others first or, you know, being that, that one that, that lets things go, even if we're still holding on to them deep inside. Um, so we really want to think about, do some inventory when it comes to our past sexual relationships, past romantic relationships, go as far back as you can think of, of, of 
where it started to what's still connected to to you your heart your energy your body your mind what may be keeping the abundance unconditional love partnerships from coming in whether they're friend or, or romantic or or business um that we that we want the healthiest relationships we want to be open we want to release negativity and all of the the things that that are tied to people and relationships of our past that that are little open wounds still that if anybody touches them a little bit we're like ah, get away from me um <laughs> that hurts because it's still an open wound. We want to heal our open wounds from the different relationships that we've had so we can move forward in a new paradigm with other people in a really healthy way where we're not being triggered, where we're not triggering others, where we're feeling really good and where we can communicate, we can open up and we can freely give, give love unconditionally without being scared of being vulnerable. So, and I am going to be doing, um, like I said, I'm be putting a lot of meditations out for a lot of different things. Re being open to love is one of those meditations that I'm so super excited um, to be bringing us soon. However, what's really important to do before that is to cut cords. So again, ebook meditation, go check it out on my website. Okay. Lastly, here we're going to get some clarifiers just to see what else is coming in with these. But these are really, these messages came through pretty clearly with our with our spirit, water, earth, air, and tech. Um, remember that's a whole, it's not a new thing. Tech isn't new, but we need to see it as a natural element and a part of our lives and to use it and to tap in with the energies coming from, coming from our, um, our tech, um, our tech element. And for more clarification on that, please do the new moon or sorry, full moon meditation. That was, um, uh, the full moon meditation just a couple days ago, I channeled Gaia and she, um, <clears throat> and she explained, okay. So for page of wands, we got page of water. Oh, nice. Nice. We've got page of water to go with our page, um, of wands. A new person enters your life, a relationship begins a new phase, heightened psychic abilities. So with this page of water from the angel tarot coming in over this um, page of wands, remember I said um, with this, it's like we, spirit is saying, open up, it's time to open up, but we've had barriers and water, this page of water with this energy coming in to say, working with me, working with water, um, wanting to connect more psychically, even like doing psychic um, um, exercises, getting a pendulum, um, getting your own oracle cards to start. I, 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 if you haven't worked with cards yet, I would suggest oracle cards before tarot cards, just because tarot is really deep and in depth and can be complicated and confusing to learn. It might be frustrating at, at, at first, whereas oracle cards are super simple. Pull a card, read the book, and then get whatever extra information you need to get. But, but this is about opening up the flow of, of the divine into our world. Okay two of wands with the two of water a relationship so more with this relationship stuff a new person here so even with this page of water this could be again just like um i'm hearing somebody that you can look up to that is connected that you can tap that you can either work with and um one-on-one -on -one or uh a person or a channel on youtube that is just like somebody that you really really connect with maybe it's me that you really like like the energy of the person that you like what they're putting out that their messages just really resonate with you um and to allow for that to come in and just to research more with that okay and then two of water relationship that comes that grows closer forgiveness the positive resolution of a conflict conflict and so we have two of water with two of wands interesting we got 
page of water with page of wands. Huh. So there's our two of, of wands and here's our two of water. And so, remember how I said she's either pensive or planning? What I feel here is there is, again, using with this water here, water with our air card, with our air position, air element. Um, really, it's about, <laughs> it's about blending. I'm hearing blending those two things the pensiveness and the planning. So, so it's like, so it's processing, processing what you, filtering out what you thought you knew, bringing in the new and then working with that and planning into the future. Again, a new person, a relationship continues to grow closer. This could just be you with your own self, your own psyche, um, your own, um, way you're getting out of your own way you're not going to stay in fear anymore and you're allowing for this to come in okay next with our water position um with the ten of air the end of a difficult situation embrace the change accept things to get better now recovering from an addiction and that is with our temperance card is our ten of air with the angel oracle so um so like what we said with temperance was the need to balance, the need to connect. Um, being, being one of healing, that just feels very healing to me. So what this is saying is if you're, if you have been in pain and conflict, dealing with addictions or even narcissists, difficult relationships, this whole kind of thing, what you can do is um, really uh, allow yourself to accept that and, and, and like the conflict is going to, to either be resolved or it's just going to be over, over and something and newness is coming through. Um, and more is about just change and changing and wanting change, wanting and, and being in that mode for, see, cause he's like really open to me. He's like, okay what's coming next. Like, I'm like ready for it. I'm ready because I'm in balance. And, um, the, the 10 of air is saying, yeah, because what's coming through is, is, um, energies that's, that's going to just, oh, oh. And I'm remembering this here, relationship harmony, relationship harmony. I just got told, um, that is the energy here is, is really thinking about those, anything that's out of, of the, in your current, anything that's a little out of where you would like it to be. Think about that resolving and what you can do to do that, whether it's meditation, sending love and healing, reaching out, um, just wanting closure, whatever that is. This is about balance with this 10 of air with all of these beautiful um, unicorns. Expect things to get better now. Expect things to get better now. There you go. Okay. And, and then six of fire with our, so six of wands with our world card victory. Good news is on the way. Public recognition and awards. Oh my God. I love this card. These two cards together. Because what did we say? This is about being social. This is about getting out into the world, either digitally or physically. And this card is saying, yeah, look at all these people that are surrounding you. Look at, it's going to be like, you're going, like, you're going to go as guided to find the way to, to be social in the world. Maybe it starts off really small with one thing, but what it's basically saying here with this victory, good news, help is on the way, public recognition with the six of fire is saying you're going to be received um, in, in the ways that you, that you, that make you feel really, really good, but you're going to have to put yourself out there. 
you're going to have to put yourself out there or all fee, obviously it's not going to come. So, so if you've been waiting to like get that motivation to kind of get into something with people, um, then this is definitely giving us that real, the good feels here. This is just kind of all the way around saying, you know, people are, you know, it's this people heavy relationship, you know, kind of energy here coming in, you know, connecting, healing, connecting, um, making plans, being social kind of stuff. Okay. And then, um, two of air came, came out in reverse as well as originally with the, with the lovers coming out in reverse, but once again, being told to turn it over two of air being unable or unwilling to make a decision, a stalemate, pretending there is no problem, pretending there is no problem. So like I said, this card was mostly about the past, what we're connected to, who we're still, who we're, who we had relationships with, either sexual or very intimate, very close or codependent relationships with people and, um, and what, and those that are over with in the past. So even if you have a current relationship, those past relationships, I guarantee you are affecting this current relationship in some way, shape or form. There's energy there that is connected into your body. That is, you know, that literally is the resonance of your frequency in your cells um, especially sexual relationships. When two people have and share sexual energy, that is extremely potent, very connecting. And, and even if it was a relationship from 10 years ago, what if it was really volatile, very abusive um, to you? What if um, um, as a female, you felt very um, unimportant or less than or used as like a receptacle for sex. And, you know, a lot of us had had relationships where we really didn't feel loved or cherished or, or revered as a beautiful woman, no matter who we are, what we look, look like. Um, so that's just something that's coming through. But but so no matter what, it's just really important. It's this is reminding us, look, we all have these these things pretending what's pretending it doesn't what pretending there is no problem. Pretending there is no problem is translating into you don't see the cords that are connected to these other people in relationships doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. You just don't see it. You don't understand how, how Josh from 12 years ago is affecting you now. And maybe the reason why you're, you still haven't brought that that person, that person hasn't, that's, that's meant to be with you hasn't come yet because Josh or Tam or Mike or, or Susie or, or Monica or, or, uh, or Eileen put an impression on you with the, those relationships. And it doesn't matter if it, the relationship was five days that you knew someone or five months or five years, energy is energy and until we cut the cords and bring back the energy into ourselves and that's really what cord cutting is it's not about being violent with anything or or angry with it it's about lovingly bringing back your life force into your body and yeah you could have a relationship with somebody 15 years ago and that cord is still active um it, it may not be all the time being, you know, tapped into, but it's still active. And if they think of you, you think of them, things happen in their life. You can, it reverberates back into your body and boop, you may just all of a sudden think of Josh one day, what's going on there. And it can bring, bring stuff up and make you feel things in your body that you haven't felt before, or even in your dreams that happens a lot too. So this is saying we need to, the two of air is like this. And it seems like the two swords are always crossing in the two of air. This is blocked energy. It's telling you, you need to open that up and, and allow for new energy to come in or bring back the energy into yourself. So very, very telling with this two of air, just bringing us, you know, just really making us understand um, all of that. And so there we have it, you guys, we have all of our clarifiers with our, with our um, six positions here with our, with our star. And um, I really hope that this is 
giving you some um, good information and understanding for this first reading for the Divine Feminine. Um, I really appreciate you being here. And again, if you haven't watched The Divine Masculine, please take a look at it, watch it in chunks or whatever. I know it's a, it's a marathon, but um, lots of really good information there. And it does tie in um, definitely to some different aspects here. So I, I really highly suggest that. Other than that, thank you so much for being here and for getting this reading. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your energy. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell comment below. Let me know what you think here. And um, I will see you soon. Bye for now. Hey there, sweet soul. And thank you for joining me here on the second pick, the second read for the Divine Feminine for March 20. Uh, 20, I almost said 2013, 2021. I don't know where that came from. But anyway, here we go. The two um, questions or the one question that we have um, is just, are we going to use the fairy oracle or the heart of fairy oracle? Other than that, we're going to do the same thing here as we did with the, uh, with the first read, which is three archangel oracle, three moonology, one hidden world, six light seers for our foundation read for our tarot. And then we're going to qualify and and clarify with the angel tarot. Um, and then the only question here is, do we go with heart, the heart of fairy or the fairy um, for one card? So let's separate these a little bit. So read number two, are we going heart of fairy here? Looks like we're going heart of very with this read. Very good. See that? So this is my clockwise. And that means, obviously, uh, we're going to be going in uh, in that direction. So um, we did the opposite with the first one. So here we're going with this one. Um, with now, which one are we starting with? Yeah, I'm feeling like we're doing the same thing. We're going to start with this deck. So starting with the heart of or, uh, the heart of fairy, heart of oracle, heart of fairy to start off our read for the second read. So thank you for picking this one. However, you are guided to this pick for your divine feminine for the month. The month. I promise I could talk. The month of uh, of March 2021. Really excited to see what comes out here um, in this read. And all three of these were exactly. I was really stoked when I was guided to do to do a uh, a pick a read for the divine feminine. I knew it was going to be really different from the divine masculine. And I'm just really excited that, that this is it. I tend to, I really like pick cards or pick a reads. Um, I, think they're, I, I mean, not from everybody, but with the people who are actually real, real psychics, real seers, it's cool to have kind of your own hand in what the reading is. You're picking the reading, right? So there is that. Okay, so... Sometimes I pick cards like this. <laughs> Guided to pick cards like this sometimes. All right, got it. Here it is. Cards we didn't pick. There. And let's see what we got. The juggler, card number 46, the juggler. Uh, 
Oh, I'm in the wrong book. That could be a problem. I'm like, okay. Number 46, the juggler. Here we go. Scattered attention, reassessment, and priorities. Well, just look at him. He can balance at least two things on his fingers uh, while running along from one important place to another. He's a very together sort of fairy, even though he leaves a trail of unconnected thought wherever he goes. Busily going about his business with one eye always on you just to make sure you are following along behind him. Have you even asked where he's leading you? I thought not, but it might be a good thing to do. He loves surprises and he's certainly going to surprise you if you don't keep your wits about you. You may like it, but then again, you may not. When you meet the juggler, just slow down and take a look at where you're going. You may be doing lots of things at the same time and you may be very good at all of them, but just be sure you can see where you're going with these projects. Perhaps you are balancing the attention of too many people at the same time. Uh, if you scatter your thoughts and attentions wherever you go, you may end up running in circles and not giving up anything or anyone. No, sorry. Running in circles and not giving anything or anyone the attention they deserve. <laughs> so um, doing too much, having you know too much on your plate, um, being scattered, not prioritizing. I have no idea what is on this card. I'm seeing there's something on this card. Um, not prioritizing your energy, maybe giving too much energy away to other people. Procrastinating, um, hearing procrastinating, that's come up in a few different things. Um, in just generally, but also that's a meditation I'm going to be putting out is about procrastination. Um, it's also something I tend to do um, because I tend to, to, to be very fluttery in my energy, go from this to this to this. So I have a lot of artwork that I started but didn't finish. I have a lot of, a lot of um, articles that I've written, but I haven't finished just because my energy has been taken from here to there. And what I'm getting with this is that we're heading into a time with this group, whoever picked this this um, this read for Divine Feminine, the our Divine Feminine energies. Remember, don't get hung up on gender. This is for everybody has Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine aspects. Again, if you didn't watch the Divine Masculine videos, please do so. Much more in depth than than even these are pretty decently. We're going to get into it, but. That one was super, super deep. Um, lots of Oracle, lots of tarot, um, and lots of direction with that read. This one is these whole, this whole set for the Divine Feminine is very different. Um, I just saw these three different sets of energies for Divine Feminine and, and to um, kind of open it up in a different way. So anyway, what I'm getting here for with this is um, I need to simplify. I need to think about the people in your life that you give energy to or what you give energy into your life or who's in it, what what's in it, um, and a need for balance. You can see he's balancing, but he's got he's got awesome these beautiful pearls of wisdom. So it's like he's doing a lot of important stuff. It's not like he's like wasting his time. He's he's very much like doing stuff and watching you. And, you know, it's just like the energy of him is, is important in what he's into. But if it's like too many things going on and for too into so many different things, it's hard to, to, to complete. It's hard to stay focused. It's hard to receive clear, concise messages. So... That's also what I'm getting from, from him. Um, getting, seeing things through 
being part, being into the process, like starting and completing to kind of wrap up the energy. So to think about maybe what also you have started, but haven't completed and see what of those energies you can just be like, I'm not going to finish that. It's it, we're not going back to that and release that energy or say, yes, I'm definitely going to do that and prioritize it, whatever it is. Um, and I'm thinking a lot of this is more creative things, but this could be also just your home. Like, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to organize this. I'm going to repaint that. I'm going to move this there. And it just doesn't get done and maybe little bits. So this would be a good time to, to reorganize um, even like what's going on in the home. That could be part of, part of the deal too. All righty. Next up, we'll go to Moonology, getting my attention here. Don't feel the need to smoke it out. We get three cards from Moonology. For the second, read for Divine Feminine. First card, a time to give rather than take. A time to give rather than take. Next card, being, oh, sorry, bring love into the situation. Nice. Time to give rather than take, bring love into the situation. And your hard work is paying off. So we have three new moons here. New moon with a time to give rather than take. New moon with bring love into the situation. New moon with your hard work is paying off. So a lot of new moon energy here, making me think of the 13th. Um, the new moon coming up um, in Pisces. So Pisces, Pisces, new moon coming up. Interestingly enough, we did not get a Pisces moon here. We got Virgo, Aquarius, and Capricorn. So we have uh, Earth and air signs coming in here with our Virgo and our Capricorn and with our, um, and air with our Aquarius. So bring love into the situation. Hard work is paying off a time to give rather than take. So with, with the time to give rather than take, it's interesting because we got this card for the divine masculine read and I'm getting a very different energy from it right now. Like a time to give rather than take is like, it's like more about the self. It's time to give yourself inside rather than take of yourself and putting it outside um, is what I'm getting here with this. And, and it was very different with the with divine masculine um, for sure. A time to give rather than take. Typically that would mean it, literally a time to give rather than take but what this is about is totally the self it's right time to give to yourself rather than take away from yourself give bringing energy and bringing healing and bring bringing a greater sense of understanding in which means time to yourself and and to maybe do some inventory um on your day-to-day -day and where and what you're connected to that's taking energy out, kind of similar to the juggler, actually. Um, bring love into the situation. So for me, again, this is again about um, this could have this could have to do with some kind of conflict, somebody that you know you're just not seeing eye to eye with, or you're, you're wondering if this is something to keep like to to keep connected to. Um, but again, this kind of, this feels like a self thing, self love brings, bring love into the situation. Let yourself be cared for self love, self care, 
Um, I'm even seeing like take a couple days off, um, book a um, book. Uh, well, if you can, <laughs> if it's safe, book a massage. Um, uh, take a weekend, go on a hike, uh, take an epically long bath, uh, buy yourself something that motivates you to connect, get a crystal, um, any of this stuff that's just like bringing love into you, into your situation. Where have you been neglecting yourself? What have you been, you know, like, not giving yourself all the love and attention that you deserve? Have you, have you been eating properly? Have you been sleeping okay? Have you been, you know, stuff like that? Again, this is like the juggler energy is like maybe too much energy has been put out. Maybe you're feeling a little run down. It's time to slow down, um, give yourself time to give rather than take, give yourself energy, bring love into the situation let yourself bring, you know, feel love in, um, inside with yourself, write yourself a, a, a letter of love. Um, there was a meditation that I did for February 14th that was body love and meeting with your, uh, with your, uh, guardian angel. So I would suggest that that would be a great meditation to do if you have not done that yet, because it's all about, feeling into the body, feeling into love for yourself, revering the beauty that it is, really tapping into all the wonderful, magical things that our bodies do. So that's coming in. Okay. And then your hard work is paying off. So I think really what it is is that you've been working really hard and you've been run ragged here and it is paying off, but more so this is back to that new moon energy, new moon, new moon, new moon, kind of resetting here with the energies to get you back into alignment um, with yourself. So this month in our thinking about, you know, care and love for ourselves and understanding and all of that good stuff. Um, this is probably going to be a theme throughout this read. I have a feel. I have a feel that that's the way it's going to be. Um, so yeah, if you've been feeling like, like stretched really thin, working really hard, you know, really trying to, to get things done, like just work, 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 work. It's time to like slow things down a little bit and take some time for yourself, maybe cut off certain, like a certain time of the day. If you've been like working from morning till night, um, I could be talking to a set of people who are self-employed, work for yourself, everything's on you. So just work, 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 work all the time, all the time. Um, that's out of balance energy. I know I tend to do this myself. It's not something to be proud of. It really isn't. It really isn't. But, um, you know, when you're super passionate about the stuff that you do, it's hard to pull yourself away. It's hard to not feel the guidance to do certain things. So, um, but this is saying you've done a lot of that. There's been energies of pushing, 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 produce, 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 kind of, you know, pushing other things off to the side. Maybe you've got piles of laundry or dishes or just clutter in places around your home because you've been focused in other ways. And it's like, okay, now it's time. I really got to really got to do this for the beginning of March. It's time to really take a look at our environment and bring more love in. So that means clear out clutter, clear out dirty, sweep mop, you know, take care of that kind of thing. Um, and then you'll feel more settled. I'm also feeling, look at your spaces where, you know, you can bring in a house plant or two into your home. If you don't, if you're not a house plant person, if that's not really your thing, think about making it your thing. It'll really help connect you with Gaia, connect you with nature, um, especially in the winter time when it's cold and we don't want to be outside so much. Some of us don't. Um, I'm one of those people. I surround myself with nature on the inside so I can feel, still feel very, very connected, even though I live smack dab in the woods, not always very compelled to go out there because it is so cold in the winter. And um, so anyway, so bringing in more energy in, of outside and the inside too, I'm, I'm feeling and 
just generally pampering yourself and taking some time off, setting, maybe not every night because that might make your, al your alcoholic, your workaholic self get a little twitchy here at first. Maybe not every night ending at a certain time if you've got to get stuff done, but maybe picking a couple nights of the week, couple days of the week where you're like, okay, once it hits this time of the day, I'm not doing work work anymore. I'm going to be doing whatever creative creative stuff happy stuff um or just vegetating you know taking a bath or going on a walk or whatever that is okay next up is archangel oracle got three cards here beloved one i believe it's shemuel yeah shemuel i'm helping you with your spiritual soulmate connection love it next one gifts from god with sandal fawn we angels Bring you gifts from your creator, open your arms to receive, and then spread your wings with Archangel Ariel. Do not hold back right now. The timing is perfect and you are ready to soar. Okay, so let's start here with Beloved One. Um, I'm helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship. So... So really helping you to sift, sift, sift through the clutter of your life, um, organize, like we just said, really, really um, simplifying, prioritizing yourself, your energy, so your time, your focus, so you can... Um, be more ready, be prepared, I'm hearing, for the people to come into your life. Now, this really implies that it's a soulmate, that it's one person, but this also applies to any soulmate relationship. So if you already have soulmate relationships um, going on in your life, which I think we all do, just, some, you know, <laughs> kind of depending on what's going on in our life or how many people are in our lives, so we, you know, we tend to gravitate towards soulmates of some distinction of some, some potency there. Um, but this is, this is more, this is not just about romantic relationships. It's also about um, any, any type of soulmate relationship that is meant for you. So it's just up to you to get into alignment with your own soul frequency so if you want to attract a soul mate, whether it's romantic or otherwise, you want that soul, whatever those soulmates are, because we have multitude of soulmates that we can connect to in these lifetimes. But the ideal situation is, is to connect with soulmates that have the same vibration, that are as close in energy as we are. It's not to say we're the same or we think the same or anything like that. It's to say that our vibration of where we, we are on the scale of vibrations from low to high is close. So we can, we can share space and have a relationship because if we meet soulmates that are way out of whack, it's not going to last long or it's going to be contentious. It's going to cause problems and and all of that. And I've met people like that. I've met soulmates that it was just like, wow, you're a soulmate. But there's no way in hell we're going to last here in any type of relationship because we're really, really off in, in frequency. So anyway, it's a, it's tr this is truly about, again, the self and really getting into your own, um, feeling into your own energy, being honest about your energy with your, with you and your own soul, with you and your body, how you feel with, with your, yourself and your life and all that good stuff. You know, are you in a position where you feel good about how, like if somebody just perfect showed up, you know, a, a perfect friend, a perfect, um, intimate partner, would you be like, oh, I'm so ready for this. Everything feels so right in my life and da, 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 da. Or would you be like, oh no, I'm working on stuff and this is going to be a problem. Like, just be honest with yourself and know that at the right time, your soulmates will come in. Um, but the most important relationship with your, with your 
with yourself is your soul is your own mated relationship divine union and that's what our portal was on the 22nd was it's the divine union portal first and foremost with ourselves then with everybody else okay so there's that and then we have gifts from god with sandal fun we angels bring you gifts from your creator open your arms to receive so this is um this really tells us to release control have faith know that our blessings come in very many shapes and sizes that we're not always meant to see and understand what that is and sometimes our gifts can show up as turmoil in our lives at first like oh upheaval turmoil change what is this about but a lot of time um there there is this underlying order to what's going on and we need to keep the faith that we're being given exactly what we need and and not to fall into fear not to fall into doubt to trust the process to keep that vibe high to know that if we stay on top of our energy and what we're doing and 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 not allow lower vibrational energies to come in and, and really rattle us for for long like i know like if i get bothered and i'm still thinking about it for you know an extended period of time and in, in any you know if it's more than a few minutes or what well, depending on the situation of course you know some things are going to rattle you for for a little bit longer than others but whatever it is if i feel like okay this is just too I, I need to not like we're cutting this off um and and stopping this this train of thought because we're really in control of what we're thinking so if we're if we're stressing 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 stress you're bothered 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 put out put out put out put out jealous 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 I mean, we could just go on and on and on and on and on and on staying in that we got to change our station turn the dial do something else um and gifts from god just kind of remind us to let go and let bring and let let our angelics bring in what is meant for us to surrender control um it says uh open your arms to receive so this just means be open to the energies and don't be such a stickler about how you're going to manifest what you want to manifest how these things are going to come into play just know that they will and if they're meant to and put forth your energy to like clearing out the way to to allow for you to receive and your gifts from god comes in different ways it could be messages synchronicities um all sorts of ways to, to put and to put things together for you to understand and then we have spread your wings with archangel ariel do not hold back right now the timing is perfect and you are ready to soar so whatever it is that you're like do i do it now do i wait do i pull the trigger um the answer is go. The answer is do it. The answer is prioritize whatever it is and then do. It's more like you're ready in a lot of different ways to get this to get this going. And there's only so much you can prepare before you go. And maybe that's what this whole like working so hard and you know doing all these different things for some of us is like you know preparing and then it's like okay you can just rehearse 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 prepare 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 do 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 and and all of that before it's like okay now it's time to just you know the show must go on kind of thing that we need to move on to the next stage here so the, it feels a little bit like that like like there's like the only reason to hold back would be because <clears throat> You, you know just internal dialogue apprehension inhibition um fears in different ways you know that sort of thing um but whatever i'm hearing whatever is to come up whatever comes up or comes of this is exactly what's supposed to, to be you can't we can only like check everything and make sure that it's working um, before we just know that we just have to go for it and it's it's all happening you know that that sort of thing spread your spread your wings um do not hold back do not hold back 
Do not hold back. It's just like, this even can go back to, um, this even could go back to beloved one. I'm feeling like if you come into contact with these people that feel very soulmatey and you're like, oh, I don't want to come off like this or like that, or be too aggressive or, or whatever, there's our card. Um, whatever it may be, um, it's just not time to hold back. It's just time to be like, if you meet somebody that's awesome, tell them that they're awesome. If you, if you really like them and you want to spend time with them, tell them that you want to spend time with them, whether it's online or in person. Like I'm also getting that as well. Um, cause there's this soulmate thing and spread your wings and fly and don't hold back and gifts from God. So that's very, if we're now, if we're taking it on a, on a difference, like it's your, your soulmates coming whether it's romantic or other partnerships, those are on the way. You're to a point where you're ready for new people to come into your life or person. It is a gift. It is, it is soulmated gift. This is like the cosmos and the universe and your timelines coming together and doing what they need to do. So you, and once that happens, it's time to let go and spread your wings and not hold back, not have inhibitions, not be like, oh, oh got to wait and see how this goes. And I'm not saying, you know, get married or, you know, decide to be roommates on the second time you talk or see each other. But what I'm saying is don't let your fears from the past hold you back. bring love into the situation. Whoa. Bring love into the situation. Remember? So that was our, I think that was our first card, bring love into the situation. So I think this is the theme here with these cards. Oh no, wait, this card was the one time to give rather than take. So that also means being selfless in these relationships. So instead of thinking, how am I protecting me? How am I going to stay, you know, protected and not vulnerable? This is about just letting go letting go give like here, I have it to give and I want to give to you and I want you to take, and I'm not expecting match match for everything. I just want this to be a nice flow kind of situation. That's really what I'm getting from that. Okay. And next with the hidden worlds, Oracle card number 18, the green man rising energy search fertility. Oh boy. We definitely have energies coming in here for, for, um, oh wait, wrong book here, this book. We definitely have energies in here that are very fertile. Um, 18, card 18, the green man, okie dokie. No matter how young or old we are, no matter how settled or unsettled we may seem to be, the cycles of the planet are inside of us and we cannot, cannot escape their magic. For now, it is time for the green man and the call to rise and reach for the light it has come again. The nature within you is rising. Just as the green man of the spring awakens the seeds and calls to the sap to rise, calls to the sap to rise in the world outside of you within you is a world a system of branches and leaves and shimmering light all of which is longing to be rediscovered and expressed once again after the time of stillness after the quiet and the contemplation comes the growth and the action and the wisdom of the trees within you have inside of you the keys to speak to the trees and the flowers to rise earlier, rest deeper, feel the song of the soul, hear the song within you and feel the song of the world inside of you, outside of you, beneath your feet. It is time to take off your shoes and place your feet back into the earth to let the guidance of the green man help you to choose what you eat and what you drink and how to grow again, dear child of the earth. Never forget that while you are surely made of the stars, you are born of the earth and this earth is a blessing and full of joys. Lie in the sun, tend to the garden, garden inside and the garden inside and in the world. Grow something, start something yourself, reach out, light the plants and move towards the sun. Let the light within you grow brighter and come from a place where you felt safe. 
for now it is time to expand into the world and let nature be your guide and let the shining life within you warm all that is about you and illumination i welcome this time of growth and expansion i reach for the light oh my gosh this is so awesome what a great card you know as we're going to be coming into spring um you know after this month ah, i can't wait <laughs> i'm so excited but this is really telling us to this is about growth expansion release letting go being um full of light and life force energy and and the and the expression of this is just not holding back it's nature with life force just coming to life and just allowing for that to spring forth in whatever expression that it's meant to do um how trees do how flowers do, how how uh, grass does, how baby birds do, who are coming out of their nests, and and just to um, really think about think about connecting in a way where where you can more deeply be guided by by this beautiful energy of the green man, but working through and with Mother Earth Gaia and, and see how that, you know, the energy of the sun charges all of this growth to happen. If we didn't have the sun, we wouldn't have that, that, that amazing, beautiful uh, growth that happens with Gaia. So this is about, I'm feeling also partnerships about, about the balance of, of the earth and the sun and the female and the masculine and allowing for that to come forth in a very un, un, uninhibited kind of way. It's really beautiful. Um, and just allowing for this energy to come forth into your life, however it's meant to be, just, just call in the green man of, of new energy. Just like, I feel like just new, beautiful, energy meant to meant to enrich your soil meant to have the the flowers bloom inside of you meant to feel the stars in the sky right through your eyes you know that sort of thing just meant to really connect you to the universe and 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 spirit and gaia and the fae when you connect to the green man and gaia you connect to the fae and the fairies and they help you to 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 let go of the things that are unimportant all righty you guys so now it's time with that those beautiful messages to get into the tarot we're gonna do the light seers tarot first and then we're gonna whoa for our that's just holding everything there isn't it that is i need something else um and then we're going to clarify with the angel tarot, but we're going to get our foundation with the with the light seers tarot. And once again, we're going we're working off of this with our six pointed with our five pointed star in the center being tech. Um, so if you can, if you want to at this point, think about one through six one through six for these cards and maybe what here may resonate more for you you don't have to if you don't want to but that came to me right before we started to point that out okay so our, our positions are spirit, one, air, two, water, three, tech, four, earth, five, and fire, six. And you can pick any of these positions if you want, or you can just kind of stick with what your astrology is for your sun or your moon sign, for your ascendant sign. Um, you can uh, change it up or just whatever comes, whatever comes. Okay, 
this card is our first card, that card is our second card, that card is our third, our fourth, our fifth, and our sixth. Bam, baby! I like it when they come out fast. Okay, what do we got here? We got a decent amount. We got interesting. Got this. We got three in reverse. Three. Oh no, we got four in reverse. Um. Okay, so let me just tap in here real quick. Go ahead, start taking on. Start picking up more information here. It's a little different with tarot because uh, it's always different. Okay, we're going straight up with Four of Swords. Four of Swords being our spirit position. We've got um, Four of Wands being in our air position. Going straight up there. And then judgment being in our third and water position. That also came out in reverse. Are we staying reverse here? No. And then our fifth position, or sorry, our fourth position is tech with the page of cups. Our uh, fifth position is the Three of Swords, and our sixth. Whoa! And our sixth position again. Not okay. So none of these. We may have. We may get like. Remember, it came out in reverse. That's happened before. But we're going straight up also with the Six of Cups here. Six of Cups. So for Spirit, we have Four of Swords. For Air, we have. For wands, for water, we have judgment. For tech, we have page of cups. For uh, earth, we have three of swords. And for uh, fire, we have six of cups. So balanced energy here, um, a little bit more with the air or the swords. Um, Wands, we have two cups, two swords, judgment is our major arcana card, just the one, and then um, four of four of wands with for our, our air position. So starting here with four of swords, lovely soul, as we can see here, she's uh she's here in this nest. I like to see her like a baby bird in a nest. Um, nice and, and uh, taken care of there. Just really, um, I'm feeling getting into balance spiritually. And it's interesting because this is the spirit. This is going within. This is having faith. This is knowing that you're taken care of. She doesn't, if you look at her, if you can see her expression... She's very peaceful here. She's very peaceful. And it may look at first like, oh gosh, what a rough spot to be in. Like she's in all this like branches and it's wrapped up and she looks a little dirty, but her expression is just serene. She's like dreaming of beautiful things and she's so comfortable, believe it or not. We've got this beautiful little heart, um, heart ribbon there too it's like you know you are loved you are protected you are being guided um in your sleep in your astral in meditation but i'm even feeling like this is more like um for this group for, with the divine feminine like there's a lot going on under the surface like even in dreams maybe you don't remember or maybe you're like all of a sudden i'm having a hard time remembering my dreams or maybe all of a sudden things are getting more vivid in your dreams um either way there's some kind of shift there going on and it neither one is is like good or bad it's just more <clears throat> Sometimes we're not meant to remember everything that goes on in our dreams because it would be quite frankly too distracting for us in this in this world. Um, and and
And I'm hearing just feel, just pay attention to how you feel when you wake up. Excuse me. Pay attention to how you feel when you wake up. Um, don't be stubborn about going to sleep if you're being asked to go to sleep during the day to take naps because that is necessary during this time of connecting, letting go, self-care. Remember, this is about self-care, not working so hard, not juggling so much, and taking rests. Super important for this for the spirit, for the body, for the energy. So, okay, there's that. And then we have for air, we have um, four of wands. So we have two fours here, which is really interesting. Um, and we have the four of wands for our air. And we see this picture here. Uh, they are enjoying themselves. They're partying. They're, they're at a festivity. Um, things are good. And this feels like this is really really great for this air because it's like you don't have to it like when you're dancing and playing and having fun and all that good stuff you don't you're it's not about like logic right i mean unless you're you know doing stuff that's like totally unsafe we're not talking about that we're talking about just like coming together with people having fun or being with you know just kind of um what I'm seeing this like celebration, like, like a new, like a new coming together kind of thing and not thinking so hard about that. Like they're together. There, there's two people here in this, in this card and, and they're, they're feeling the energy of each other and it feels really, really good. Um, I think this is more of that, like tapping into your, you know, just the basic, like what feels good for my soul kind of thing. Um, and again, uh, allowing for you to just feel into the energy and be in the moment. That's what I'm hearing with this, with this air, with this air portion of the star is be in the moment. That's what I'm hearing with that right now. Okay. And then we have judgment, judgment coming in for our what for the water portion of the star. Um, yeah, more releasing, just more releasing, more, more I'm forgiving of the self. Um, it, when we think of judgment, sometimes it's like with this card right now, it's like really letting yourself release yourself from your burdens of the past. I'm hearing releasing yourself and using water. And also just coming in here, it's just like using the element of water, thinking about water. Um, and I'm also hearing like what you think others think of you, what you, what you kind of are afraid of what others think of you, that kind of thing, like releasing that judgment, like truly releasing that judgment. If you're coming to the expression of your soul and your soul purpose, your divine soul purpose, then, then sure. A lot of people are not going to quite get all that's going on there, but it's not for them to get and you're you're um or the weight that you put on on yourself about what others may think of what you are what you do or how you live or how you love or how you eat or breathe or smell or sleep any of these things it's like what others think of you i'm just hearing this what others think of you judgment there's even this could be about actual judgment about actual like like court stuff too and feeling judged and being judged and what's going on with all of that um that sort of thing and being in fear of the the outcome or the or the reper repercussions of that and i'm just kind of feeling here like stop worrying 
um, that it feels to me like this is a lot of this is dependent on your energy and how you're projecting that. So your fear of being judged or misunderstood is kind of lending to others not understanding or misunderstanding you or seeing things from a certain perspective because that's a perspective you don't want them to see so you have to let go of that and and just know that what is the truth if you if you think that tr if you if you revere the truth if you're a truthful person yourself if you live from a place of truth and authenticity then that is the energy and the vibration that comes out. Now, there will be other things that will challenge that, of course. But if you stay true to that, then that is the, that is the truth of what will come out. And that is the energy that will come out. So a lot of times the fear of being perceived a certain way gets us perceived that way. <laughs> gets that kind of judgment because we that's what we don't want. But we're thinking about it so much, right? So so it's, it's like that. It's like it's it's um letting go and releasing and letting the whatever we're afraid of others or even ourselves and that's the other side of it too it's like where are we where are we judging ourselves where are we out of balance with what we think of ourselves and for, and why um and in different categories and what what do we need to release the, the weight of anything that's negative when it comes to that and and really find where what that's connected to so we can do this i love this card so much because she's just like yes i'm letting go of this burden and just letting it letting it go letting it release so i so everything in me is lighter really tying into the green man energy a lot there okay next with earth we have this three of swords this is a really intense card it kind of always is with the three of swords so it always shows some kind of being held up tied up and it being connected with some type of love business going on and here with with earth um, with this earth uh, point on the star, on our five pointed and our center star position. Um, oh, actually, I skipped tech. Well, we'll go back to tech since I already started here. Uh, We got something similar to this in the first read. It's a little bit different, but basically the same. Um, this is about um, when it comes to being weighted down with energy from, this one feels like current, current, but also past situations that we need to cut cords from. Um, that we need to release energy from, that we need to uh, be more understanding with ourselves and how this energy affects us and, uh, and what it's all about and what it's connected to. So, um, and feeling fragmented, feeling literally broken apart by certain situations that happened in the past in regards specifically, I'm feeling specifically when it comes to love. Um, most, this it could be familiar love, so it could be parent-child, but what I'm really, but, um, and, and those types of things are any type of like familiar type of love relationships that are ex especially or you know marriage things like that um, really long term relationships. Um,
I'm really getting from this, like I've never seen before, if we see the tree in the background, so we see that tree. And what I'm getting from this is um, whatever is going on now to explore into, you, you know, karma stuff, past life stuff, um, really work on doing some energy work specifically designed to release karmic ties um, when it comes to uh, uh, love soulmate type relationships and um, or familiar type. Oh, yeah, definitely picking up on this. I'm starting to feel things in my body. OK, so definitely on to something here. Um, this is about kind of tracing the roots back. Literally, I could see that with this tree, it's like family tree, karmic tree, Akashic records kind of stuff. Um, so whatever is going on for you that is that has maybe it's like a justice thing maybe there there is something here that comes to you know on one side really trying to break free and get spiritual and get into meditation and really get, you know just go within because this is what spirit this is really going within connecting all that stuff um releasing um not being inhibited letting the flow go that kind of thing and then here with judgment um uh and, and bringing that into balance what is out to what is in to come out to be authentic and all that. And then here with this three of swords, wow, this one's super deep, you guys. It's like tied all in together here. And it's saying, you know, to really kind of uh, work on this divine feminine energy, what's a really big deal to do and to think about here is this with the three of swords and really taking into consideration what is going on in the present that needs to be healed and worked out is directly tied into some type of karmic situation with this person or people. And what needs to happen is to really um, uh, do some meditations. And I think I, I may be, um, it, I'm working on, on, on decoding a bunch of guidance that I got for my meditations. Um, but um, I think I'll probably be doing one for this, for just like going back and really healing karmic wounds, um, pulling out files from the Akashic records that are going to help us to assimilate, integrate, and, um, and, and ultimately release, heal, and rise from these situations, whatever these are that are in the present, that are holding us in place, that are definitely karmic, that are soul-based, that are, you know, like, these are the things that you need to work on in your life at very specific points that are attached to your greater awareness and knowing. They may seem like, you know, maybe even horrible situations, very difficult situations, um, very, a lot of upheaval, a lot of strife, a lot of heartache, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, a lot of times this is how we learn. This is how we get like our biggest lessons in life is going through these hard, the toughest of challenges. <sighs> take my word for it. Unfortunately, that's the case. It's just how it works. And this really feels like it. So it's kind of like you have a choice. You can go through the motions and kind of, you know, do your best with, you know, just kind of like being in here where you can really expand and explore um, with what is deeper spiritually. This tying into this for sure. This tying into this, this, sorry, this energy here, really thinking about going within, trying to unravel the knots. Um, it's like she's caught up in, in this like knot of energy also. So it's like, you can see it that way. Um, and needing to, to figure this, figure out some of this stuff so she can like have these aha moments, have these moments of releasement. Okay, we're gonna backtrack here and go to tech with the page of the cup. So let me just tap in there. We're supposed to go air, water, tech, and then earth, but whatever. It, it, we got what we got when we needed to get it. Um, but but anyway, that's that's the deal. So again with the yawn. Um okay. 
Oh my God, I love this so much. Okay. Oh God, I love this so much. Okay, okay, okay. So this coming through, this page of cup coming through with our tech position. Now, just to re refresh, tech is there in the center touching all. So tech would be in the center of our five points of star, head, arms, feet, right? So tech is coming in um, as our element with the page of cups. And if you take a look here, we've got like some, who, what is this person just like floating there? And, um, and then over here, you can see there's, there's like two, it's like an arm extending out of his arm and a heart. So it's like an arm extending out of his heart, and another arm coming out of nowhere. And they're doing this heart sign thing, which is really efficient. Um, and we have a pig that's flying <laughs> and we have a cup. Um, and he, we're by the ocean here. So page of cups. And what I just got here is, um, is uh, uh, when we're talking about, this one, <laughs> this one, beloved one, um, I'm helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship. It's really funny because immediately when I tapped into this, it was like, this is the tech position. And this is, um, and immediately it was, uh, um, connection, connection to soul family, soulmate through tech through technology and or soulmates through technology and um and following the guidance to connect with people that we either that that through research through just popping up on our feeds through somebody giving you information on on a certain somebody to watch or to listen to or on a podcast a youtube a, an article um maybe it's it's a meetup place where you go and you're gonna find you know groups for meetup and stuff like that whatever it is it's definitely it is not like walking down the street and meeting somebody and that being your connection it's more like this is going to happen um, or has already happened through technology somebody literally dropping into your world having this really intense it's kind of hard to see that he's got all this energy coming off of himself like woo woo heart chakra built business going on um, I'm really tapping into the water of the body, the, the blood in the water of our body, like we're what, 60 to 70% water, 68% water, we're mostly water, which is really interesting coming in with our tech position, but tech is electricity. Electricity conducts um, and makes water do all sorts of interesting stuff, makes you feel stuff, right? You put electricity in water, what happens? A lot of interesting things happen. And so um, uh, it can even kill you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it can be really, really intense. And so that's what I'm seeing here with this, with this card here. It's like, this is really, really intense, like boom kind of energy with um, either a group of people, a person, and that's supposed to be like a partner, business partner. Um, it could even be something that's going to really help you. But I'm really feeling no matter what, this is like real, really important soulmate type relationship um, that again, getting my attention with the beloved one here. And, uh, and so, yeah, so so don't just count those connections that you make online, whatever those are, but at the same time, don't go looking for it. Like, oh, I'm gonna meet my people. Is it here? Is it there? Anything. It's just gonna be very natural and organic. But when it happens, you're gonna be like, oh, this is somebody I need to, to connect to, to talk to or to follow or to read more of or whatever it is, just to open up and expand you out. Okay, and then we're going to our fire card, six of cups with our fire card. I really love this card, um, no matter in what deck, it's just a very balancing energy, uh, energy with the six of cups. Um, but here it's telling me uh, that, again, this is a relationship, um, but this is a, a guardian angel. This is a um, us coming into greater 
connection with our angelics, with our guardian angels. It's like we're we're the the human, the puppy is the guardian angel, and you can see with us every step of the way, growing and and and, and no matter how old we get, always having that same guardian angel with us. Try not to get emotional. Uh, and our guardian angels bring us more guardian angels, animals into our lives. So a lot of us are very into animals or very connected with animals. Um, and maybe if you weren't, maybe you were becoming that way. Maybe if you're somebody who is just like, I'm too busy, I have a hectic life, they're great, but I don't have the time or the resources or the attention to spend to them. Or maybe things have changed. So maybe you can consider getting some type of pet. Maybe it could be some type of like a gecko or something like that that doesn't require a lot of space and 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 um, but that you can still love and get affection from and connect to and put on your shoulder and and just you know have that kind of thing. It's like I'm feeling like whatever. Okay, I'm gonna try not to get emotional. Jeez. So it's like whatever. Um, um, whatever either animals you already have in your life or new animals that may be coming in or that you may be compelled to bring into your life or to connect to in whatever way. It could be even the birds outside your window or the, or the, the squirrels that you see every day. But I'm really feeling that it's more of a, of a, of a personal connection. Um, so to really see either the animals you already have in your life is the kind of extension of your guardian angels. Like you wouldn't have these beautiful creatures in your life if they weren't guided to you, if you weren't compelled to bring them into your life and make them part of your family. You have to think about what that means. And again, try not to get emotional. Um, uh, so we're just really being asked to... Uh, open up our hearts to connect with our guardian angels, with our angelics, with our, with our uh, partners on the other side. Yes, that's what I'm hearing from my guardian angels. Our, our partners on the other side who bring into this, into our world, more guardian angel type love, more unconditional love. Because that's what a guardian angel is. A guardian angel is 100% on your side all the time, doesn't judge you, would never shame you, only wants to give you love, support, affection. And because they can't actually, I mean, they do in their own way, but because they can't actually like love and kiss on you, like in the physical, um, to help you with that love and affection type energy, regardless of what's going on with humans in your life that can be so much more complicated than animals. Um, animals are so simple and sweet. I mean, they, it's just, oh God. So it's like, it's like we, they, we, we are brought into this energy and they're brought to us for a reason. And, um, so it's the, these two different things, it's pay attention to the animals in your life and, and see them in a new way, see them like the extension of your guardian angels and, and, and the extension of Gaia bringing nature and love and awareness and different perspectives of life and love and fear and, and trust and abandonment and all those things. You know, a lot of people rescue animals that were abandoned. What is that? So what is that energy that we're trying to help heal, right? I mean, I've done it myself. So yeah, um, I have a lot of those actually. Um, yeah, I come to think about it. Uh, so, and then it's about connecting with our actual guardian angels and archangels and divine ones on the other side that can come through to us. Okay, I literally got through that without actually crying. Okay, it counts because no tears actually fell. Huh. So, um, Okay, so what we're gonna do here is clarify with our angel oracle. This set though, I am feeling like I want to smoky smoky. Oh, man, that was emotional. Woo! What time is it? 
228. Okay, we'll be done here soon. Thanks for watching this again, you guys. Don't forget if you haven't yet, if you're still here watching this, that means you like this video. So please drop a like down for this video, share, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell and comment here at the end of this let me know what you thought of this reading does it resonate did it is it on point for you did you pick the right reading no it's all on you <laughs> i joke i joke <laughs> that's hilarious okay i'm hearing no matter which way they come out we're going right side up Almost there, you guys. Almost there. Just this deck is so fat. <laughs> so big and fat. And I have really big hands, too. It's so hard for me. I call what I call my man hands. <laughs> I have man hands. Oh, oh, okay. Those will be our first one. To, oh, wow. Okay. One. Two. Three, four, five, and six. There we go. <laughs> okay, what do we have here with our four swords, King of Earth? Ooh, and our little blurb here at the bottom of King of Earth. There is King of Earth. Interesting. King of Earth, a successful time, confidently accept opportunities you're offered the Midas touch. Wow, that is such a powerful card. King of Earth here. I'm also feeling heavy Archangel Michael um, energy here. Um, as you can see, he is an angel. He has those angel wings. And um, this is our spirit position for our, our messages. And so um, really feeling that this is about like when you go within, when you go to sleep, when you're meditating, call in your angels, call in your archangels, especially um, to come in and work with you to help you get to those higher dimensions. So before you go to sleep at night, call in whatever archangel that, that you either are, you know, feel super connected to, um, or if it's just, um, you could call them all in. You can call Michael, Gabriel, uh, um, Samuel, Uriel, just Jophiel, Haniel, um, Sandalphon. This, our beautiful Samuel, is our angel, um, archangel who brought us that beloved one message. But really, this is just, it's Michael kind of saying, we're here. This is all of us here for you. Um, he's usually at the front since he is the like the head of of the archangels, and um, and really is just coming in, wanting you to connect, wanting you to accept the reality that if you haven't already, there are such things as angels and archangels, and 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 the more you bring that awareness into your everything, the easier things will be because you'll be able to pick up on so much more and you'll be able to wake from sleep and dream state from meditations. You'll be able to understand things as they come to you because it's not always, it can become super, super, super clear, but sometimes it's a little like, what does this mean? What am I supposed to understand from this? What am I supposed to get from this message or whatever? And the more, the, the more you, you accept and tap in with angelic energies, again, like I was talking about with your, with your guardian angel, um, the more that that comes. Okay, then for our four of wands card, remember that. We have the Ace of Air or the Ace of Swords. And it says, brilliant new ideas and inspiration, seeing truth of a situation, a challenging beginning. 
beginning. So this is again about like what goes on up in the head. And again, brilliant ideas and um, inspiration. So that's all like up in here, right? So yeah, this, this is a um, definitely a very inspirational card. Um, well, and Yeah, same truth of a situation and brilliant new ideas. It feels like really what's coming down here through spirit is, is hitting our, our air side, our thinking logical side and going, huh, we're, we're being instead of the right angle, 45 degrees, this is what it is. We're expanding, we're expanding those rigid, um, ideas and we're getting you know the the rigid matrixy type of ideas that we the programs um are being deleted the limitations are being deleted so a challenging beginning is just really speaking to the to our first life the life before we spiritually awaken that's always going to be more challenging and and it's also that that's our challenging beginning but our also our challenging beginning is speaking to we always have a challenging beginning in the beginning of our spiritual awakening everybody does everybody has a challenging start to their awakening because it's like waking up in a new world and you going what's what and what am i and what's happening and what is what? it's just like what and it's all about seeking the truth what is the truth because what i knew to be the truth turns out to not be the truth so now what is the truth and it can be very challenging but that brilliant ideas, brilliant epiphanies, brilliant synchronicities that are going to take you just right off on this beautiful, um, uh, what are these called? Pega, Pega corns, um, that is coming to take you away. Probably one of the most mystical creatures in all of creation is the Pega corn. It's, it's, it's a flying unicorn, um, because it, a unicorn is doesn't fly, but a pegacorn does, and that's an even like greater fantasy type of a of a concept. But that's what it's saying. Your limitations um tell you this doesn't exist, right? Your limitations of your of your matrix forty five degree angle understanding of the world tells you that this doesn't exist this person this this entity this being this pegacorn doesn't exist but guess what it does it does they do and and that's where your mind goes Shook! what and and yeah um we have we have certain things that come through in our world and dimension that are depicted in a certain way because they actually exist we may they not may not exist like a dog and a cat in this dimension in this world but that doesn't mean they don't exist because trust me they do i've actually channeled one of these beautiful creatures a few times um and and for as as quiet reserved as impossible as they may seem, as um, fantastical as something like this existing, it um, they do exist and they tap into us to let us know about the the possibilities of creation that we don't always get the privy of of seeing until we decide that that anything is possible okay <sighs> judgment remember that with the nine of air expecting the worst self-fulfilling prophecy sleepless nights yeah exactly remember how we talked about how judgment it's like afraid of being judged afraid of what people will think afraid of the outcomes like I'm not being seen, you know, clearly being misunderstood, like being ignored, being abandoned, um, um, getting, you know, some type of judgment put upon us, that type of thing. But this card is to tell us we don't have to worry about those things. It's up to us 
to let all that stuff dissolve because a lot of that, a hundred percent of that is internalized in, in us. When we're expecting the worst, what happens? Usually the worst. So because we're resonating those frequencies in our very molecular structure, in our very cells, in the water of our body, and if you've seen those um, those Dr. Yamimoto videos of water and what happens when you speak to the water, if you haven't seen those videos, I think his name is Yamimoto, but I'll, I'll make sure. But if you've seen those videos and, and it's basically him saying to, to, um, to water um, or to rice, uh, repeating certain things, I hate you, I love you, you should die, like, like really, you know, you're, you're beautiful, whatever, the, the, what that does to the actual water um, is fascinating, or what that does to the rice. He has some rice that he talks beautifully to, and it stays perfect, it looks good, and he has rice that he talks horribly to, and it's all moldy and gross really fascinating but that tells us what it's a perfect example that tells us what we think what we say matters it's not it's matter it's weighted and it causes changes in the very structure of things so this is to say this is what you get when you when you allow and you hold on to judgment for yourself for situations and stuff like this for being very when things are out of balance when things are are in the dark and not in the light so nine of air is saying yeah self self fulfilling prophecies it's exactly what i was saying before it's about it's about worrying about a certain thing and then making that exact same certain thing that you're worrying about be the case so if you're worried about being found guilty and you're thinking oh they're going to think i'm guilty 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 you're probably going to be found guilty because you're just thinking guilty but but if you're thinking you know and you know the truth of the situation and you're and you're you know staying in the truth of stuff then you're not going to be worried about those things all righty um we have eight of fire here with our um with our earth with our three of swords, events moving at a fast pace, the laser over, many things happening at once. All right, so let me tap in here and what we're getting here with the eight of fire, with the eight of um, wands, with the um, three of swords. Okay, so remember how we said this is about whatever may be going on most likely in the present with people, things that we're tied to, really to understand what's going on in um, karmically, uh, tapping into Akashic records, that sort of thing. What I'm getting here with the aid of fire, events moving at a fast place, the laser, blah, 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 blah. And I'm picking up with the imagery here is that you're just going to be super motivated to dig deep, to get this stuff done and to see these things kind of um it's like you can clean your garage and it can take all year you could clean your garage in one day if you really like pedal to the metal it you know that kind of thing and i feel like it's like energy is coming through to help us really understand what things are all connected to what are these things in the now that are um anchored and rooted in, in karmic energy, even before this lifetime, Akashic record kind of stuff. And this is saying there's energies coming in that's really gonna help us um, push through this, clean it out, figure it out, tie it all up and get it over with nice okay then six of cups remember this got super emotional guardian angels uh babies that are in body uh, animal bodies so here we go life experience is our card here um with archangel shamuel coming again a significant life event a powerful revelation that leads to change time to spread your wings did we get that one in this read? Yeah, spread your wings twice. Okay. Um, and then
Um, I'm spacing on what life experience. I'm like, I always have a hard time with flow. Remembering <laughs> where our um, positions are for the major arcana. I don't know. It's just a thing. I have a hard time like remembering which one's which. Um, oh, the tower. Oh gosh, how could I forget? <laughs> Life experience is the tower, but I did know I needed to look it up. The tower. The tower has been coming out a lot lately. Um, that I've seen significant life event, powerful revelation that leads to change, a time to spread your wings. Um, definitely life experience has a much different different ring and a vibration to it than the tower. The tower always is like, you know, um, <laughs> explosive change where life experience with Shamuel comes in a little bit less explosive, but still it's the same energy. It's the same card. And what's this? This is our remember six of cups. So the six of cups, the tower life experience here, a powerful revelation that leads to change time to spread your wings. We're getting that twice. Um, I feel that these two here, earth and fire, um, this thing with the Akashic records and that coming in is really tied with this life experience thing, because it's like, what was our past life experiences and karmic, um, uh, residue or, or, uh, lessons that we needed to bring into this life to work on. We're also coming into this lifetime, you know, taking little packets of karmic injustice or, or lessons that needed to be, um, sorted out from our ancestors as well. These lifetimes were taking on not only our own karmic energy, but collective and ancestral karmic energy as well. So that's why it, you know, it, because it's, it's more complicated than just one line to you and your past lives. It's one line to you and what you're connected to for us to sort out in these lives. Some of us, it's more for some of us, it's less, but everybody's got a little bit of that going on. And so it's a little bit disconnected. Um, it takes a little bit of digging. It's like where it's like, oh, the water's not working. What happened? We have a, a, a water pipe busted, but then we look around. It's not our, our water pipes are not busted, but the pipe connected to the pipe that's bringing in the pipe, 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 or whatever from our neighbor, that one's busted. And you and your space and what you're looking around, you're not seeing that, but it's still connected. So it's kind of what I'm seeing here is like, these things are going to be, once we tap in to the, those energies and start allowing for the deeper, the deeper energies that are affected, that do affect our lives, unbeknownst to us, that do affect our lives, being able to see them with clear eyes, with light coming in to go, oh, there it is. And what, what was, what was the, um, the card that came up before here? It's this card saying our guardian angels, our, our connections to our, to the other side is helping with this energy is helping us to see these, um, and to work through these life events and to see the connection to other energies that, you know, that, whether they're our, our Akashic records, our specific past lives, or the energy that are connected to us from other people and events that, that we took on to, before we came into these lives that we, you know, kind of signed on the dotted line. Yep, I'm going to work on that. We're going to work on that kind of thing. And we took on a lot, a lot, a lot for these lives. So we need all the help we can get. <laughs> we need all the help we can get with that. Okay, guys. And that is it's your second reading for the divine feminine. I want to thank you for being here with me um, for this reading. It was really, really awesome. Um, it had certain components of the other one, but it was very different um, as well and um, brought up some different things for sure, um, for sure. So I hope it resonated with you. Again, if you stay through this video, if you like this video, please like the video. Please leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about it. Let me know what about this resonated with everything. Was I on point with just specific things? You can just let me know how that, how that works for you. And I want to 
thank you for being here again. Please enjoy and take care of yourself. Remember the self-care, slowing down, not juggling so much with your time and energy, really prioritizing um, is coming up, connecting with life force, with Gaia, knowing that we have these amazing gifts coming, these amazing gifts coming, beloved ones are coming, all of that good stuff. We just have to put ourselves in the position to spread our wings and fly. Remember, we got that advice twice here about spreading our wings at the very beginning here at the very end, really heavy on support. Remember, we had um, Michael coming out. He's the one he's like, remember me? I'm here, Archangel Michael, and I'm here to help you, protect you, guide you, bring you to others that can guide you. Just please pay attention. Please um, know that everything happens for a reason and um, you're very supported and very loved. Okay, thanks so much for being here, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay there, thank you so much for joining me for this third read for the Divine Feminine for March 2021. We're going to do the same spread using the same cards as we did for the first two. And the same thing for the first two, though, is that we're just the only variant to that is whether we're going to use the Heart of Fairy Oracle by Brian Froud or the Fairy Oracle by Brian Froud. And just here at the top, we're going to get that information. Thank you again. Thank you for being here, for picking this third reading. Let's see what we get. Let's jump right in. So Heart of Fairy for this third reading, yes or no? Okay, pretty sure that's a no, or else it would have started moving. And just to be clear, we're using the Fairy Oracle for this third reading. And there goes a yes in that direction. Nice and strong, even pulling me in that direction. So there's our yes for the fairy oracle, not the heart of fairy oracle. And kind of, let's slow that down. And kind of what we, yeah, what we did for the other reads was we jumped right into that fairy message. So let's go ahead and tap in with the fae. So, whoa, so just... Um, take a moment here to open up to the fairy realms. Um, and their world and all that they bring, their amazing energy that they bring, um, always to help guide us, heal us, teach us in some way. They work very, very closely with Mother Gaia. And, um, and everything natural and help us connect in that way too. Um, so anyway, so we're just gonna clear some of this, clear these cards here just real quick with some Sage and Palo Santo. And all right, we're just gonna get one card. So we're doing one of these, one of the hidden world hidden world oracle three of moonology three of archangel oracle and then six for our five pointed star and one in the center We got card number 16, the bright mother. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. I mean, his artwork is literally divine. It's absolutely ridiculous, beautiful artwork. Um, the, the bright mother from our fairy oracle, the fairies oracle by Brian Proud. That is what that looks like. Um, Card number 16, there she is, the bright mother. Okay, settle in, this is a little bit long. 
they kind of tend to be, but good information here, I guarantee you. The Bright Mother, if you want, you can pull this up on Google or your DuckDuckGo or whatever you use. Um, this is the card number 16 from the Brian Froud, uh, the Fairies Oracle. Creativity, nurturing, productivity, intimacy, sheltering. She is the bright mother of us all and knows that life, all life is a miracle. The bright mother is constantly amazed at its perfection in imperfection. She rejoices in its being, sorrows for its growing pains and exalts in its successes. This great lady is both earth mother and the full bright moon, pregnant with the future of all growing things. She feeds us and provides us with air, water, shelter, and an amazing, in an amazing complex world. She sees to it that we are challenged enough to grow, but not so much as to be overwhelmed. If we want more challenges than she provides, we have to give them to ourselves. The Bright Mother is the guardian of family life, and she creates and holds a nurturing environment for us all. She is the garden where vegetables, fruits, and herbs grow. Thus, she sees and holds the mysteries in the mysteries and ordinary processes of daily life. The bees making honey, the cream turning to butter, the birth of a baby and its growth, the blossom turning to fruit, and the wheat ripening. This lady has loving patience for natural processes, however slow. Her commitment to us is for life, her eternal life, not our ephemeral uh, in the flesh lives. Uh, she is present in all of our deep and committed relationships, facilitating, nurturing, loving, creativity, and giving. She uh, fosters within us the kind of security that gives us the inner stability we need to explore and adventure out into the world and within our own psyches. She reminds us that there are times when we must put others first because their need is so great, but that in doing so, we must not lose sight of our own needs and nurturing. Uh, one online group member sees her keeping an eye on things. Oh, excuse me. Keeping an eye on things, making sure that we all do what we need to do. To another, she's, um, she says, you know me by the joy in your heart and the help in your hand. You can have it all. All you have to do is ask. For a third, the key word about her is able, able to carry, care, nurture, and enjoy. One last thing, one last thing, people tend to project their own experiences with mother and mothering on her. Sometimes this helps us to see her with more clarity, but often it creates muddle. Not all mothers are good and wise. The bright mother is. Each time we perform a compassionate act of nurturing, we become more like the bright mother learning unconditional giving unconditional giving starter reading or just our general reading here this is page 83 by the way when the bright mother is present in a reading she speaks of a time of fertility creativity nurturing ourselves or of others. She might indicate marriage or the birth of a child or a deepening of any kind of relationship. She also speaks of giving one's all to life, not holding back. She is like a cornucopia pouring forth abundance. This may be a time to put the needs of others first, taking care of yourself later. Patience may be needed for the process um, being discussed. Consider what you have. Acknowledge the people and things in your life, good, bad, and indifferent. The, this consideration is not to judge, approve, or reject, but merely to recognize that what is present. Ooh. Oh, sorry. This is like energy yawns, not tired yawns. <laughs> um, I tend to yawn when I like start picking up on energies. It's interesting. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, this consider is consideration is not to judge, approve, or reject, but merely to recognize what is present in your life. 
These are your present fulfillments, the things you have created for yourself, drawing upon the power of unity and the singers, or not, as the case may be, the singers can also be thought of as archangels. Once you have looked clearly at what is present in your life, you may, may want to ask yourself what you want to change. And there's a whole reverse meaning, but I'm not going to go there. Sometimes I do, sometimes I do. So she is about nurturing, loving unconditionally, um, the growth, being patient for growth. I think that is like our hardest part. I think like when it comes to the people that I work with, my clients, when they talk about, you know, moving to a next stage or whatever, it's just patience being like one of the hardest things to practice is patience um, and patience for the process. So this energy is about growth, but being patient in the process. It's about love, but loving unconditionally because love with conditions is not truly love actually it's something else it's if it's conditional if you're giving is super conditional if you're giving is is because of needing or wanting something in, in return then it's not love it's not true heartfelt giving it's it's a transaction <laughs> that's different. That's a negotiation. That's a contract. Giving doesn't require a contract. Love doesn't require a contract or a negotiation or a set of parameters to live by in order to fulfill or to keep giving or getting. Um, love is just love and it's free and and patient and kind and understanding and supportive and and loving and just all all of those things that we think about how a baby should be treated with with such care and nurture and patience and all of that good stuff that is the this energy so we're coming in we're coming into this divine feminine reading super heavy with like the most feminine energy you can possibly imagine with the bright mother this should be good and what's interesting with this reading from the very top it's so different from the last reading is that just the nature of of the energy coming in from the top um it's just very very interesting so with this we're being um we're being asked to open up to the natural processes of life, to understand that change is a constant. Creation is and creating is at the core of what we are. We were created to create. We were born of a great mother that all she is and does is create, um, of course, with the energy of, of the sun and of that amazing masculine energy needing to, to keep things fertile, for, you know, to fertilize things for us to grow. But, but if it wasn't for her, all the fertilizer in the world wouldn't make anything grow if it wasn't for her beautiful motherly natural energy that is, you know, ready to grow. So it's about the readiness of growth, the readiness of wanting to, to, to heal, to accept unconditional love. Um, and, and that is about healing is love. So if healing comes from a place of aggression or, you know, let's drive out bad energies, rawr, you know, then that's not going to work. Everything that I do that we do in my healings and stuff all comes from a place of love and connection, working with Gaia and um and the archangels and your your spirit your entire spirit tribe and all that so so um it's a very so so love is healing love is kindness love is support love is patience and and that's really kind of like what we had coming in with a lot of the reads for the full moon and the full moon energy was just like 
I should have called it the full moon and March readings, honestly, because it, it they really had a, de a much deeper than just the full moon. It was a lot more there. But anyway, those messages, a lot of those messages spoke to um, nurturing and creativity and and nurturing our creativity and nurturing ourselves and self-love and all that good stuff. So, um, so anyway, I'm so far, I we barely got started and I'm already super in love with this. Okay, let's get three cards. We've got one, we've got two, we've got three here. Perfect, let's put two over there. First card out. It's time to take action, new moon in Aries. New moon in Aries, time to take action. Second card, confidence is your key to success. And third card, be bold and make the first move. Wow. Take action. Confidence is key. Be bold and make the first move. These are all really intensely like go get them, tiger kind of energies, aren't they? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, time to take action. Time to take action. Time for growth. Time for creativity. Time to get on those projects, time to get the, that book finalized to, you know, to pull the trigger on some things, to take bold action, to have confidence that this is ready to boom. It's like Mother Mother Gaia coming through and saying, do you think I sit around and wonder if all the, if everything is ready to grow in spring? No, I just do my thing and go, go, let's go. And everything starts to just blossom and bloom and and like what we heard there. And so this is just energy saying we're in a time of, of just go, but also I'm hearing her go, but don't rush. The key to success is patience and prioritization and authenticity and understanding. It's not just wild, reckless abandon, <laughs> throwing everything out. <laughs> just going rah. it's like no it's it's one it, there's a process to growth right there's a process to 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 creating something and that's it so you know that's kind of that like immature mature energy um that we can all that we all have um, and so it's tapping in with the inner child of that, like, yes, having the confidence inhibited, like not being inhibited, just create, create, create. But I'm feeling like this is about like, like when it comes to those of us that are, you know, really serious about putting things out into the world that we create, we need to have that balance of passion and control and feeling and knowing when it's time to release things out into the world and when it's time for it to still have, you know, have a bake and, and work and stuff. I mean, I have an article that it's a big fat article on domestic violence that has been baking since July. Then I've had like three sets of eyes on it to look at it and, and to and to work that out with me and and this month it's going to come out i'm super excited i'm super excited that and a lot more so that's just an example of how you know things that take time to create you know books don't get written in a day <laughs> kind of thing systematic work 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 and then boom pull the trigger so i think for some of us we have certain things that are just ready to rock and roll ready to play ready to go we don't have to work anymore on it we don't have to put a whole lot of work into it to get it going and then of course there's other things that's going to take some time but the whole it's like layers of the cake is what she's showing me it's like you're baking different layers of the cake to build this beautiful, um, exquisite pastry at this, you know, to show it once, but there's layers that need to happen at different times. And so it's a really cool analogy. Actually, I'm literally seeing like somebody in the kitchen baking cakes and frosting here and baking here and decorating here. And um, it's one of my favorite accounts on Instagram, actually, is this incredible cake maker. Um, <laughs> Wasn't seeing him, but it made me it remind me of him. But but it's the confidence to build something, to make something, to create something, and then boom, put it out there. This is what I have, and not wasting any time. But then again, not rushing either. So I'm getting both of these 
energies here. Uh, but your confidence in what you know and your connections is going to guide you, it is going to be like this is, you know, you have confidence in knowing that that's going to happen. Um, you'll know when to make the first move. You'll know when it's time, whether whatever that, that it is. And this could also be about, um, um, letting yourself be known to a certain person or people or something like that. If you've been like, oh, I want to approach them to work with them or to date them or to fall in love with them, but I'm going to wait till the time is right kind of thing. I'm going to wait until something changes or shifts or whatever to change the dynamics of this relationship or, or to put myself out there in a different way. That's also coming through again, confidence, be bold, confidence, make the day action. This is very all the same kind of energy, very similar energies coming from these three different cards, but very much in alignment um, with the theme here. Okay. Oh, intense. You see how fiery I got there? It's just like all this like, girl, it's like, I feel it like this created just like ready to just like, but it's also before I move on, but it's also like, remember I said like plan strategically. So that's something that I've been told too with my own creations that need to be put out like a little assembly line of my art that needs to be finished of my writing that needs to be finished of you know whatever else that that is in production mode is about planning that out mapping that out to help us okay next archangel oracle Archangel Oracle, there's our first card, there's our second card, there's our third card. Wasted no time, people. Here we go. Victory. Holy victory with Sandalphon. Your prayers have been heard and answered. Have faith. Hallelujah, babies. Have faith. Your, your prayers have been heard and answered. Spread your wings. Uh, this is coming up frequently. Do not hold back right now. Do not. So we just got, what did that say? What did that say? Confidence is key. Make the first move. It's time to take action. So, um, so yeah, do not hold back right now. Um, do not hold back right now. The timing is perfect. You're ready to soar. So more of this energy coming out saying, dude, <laughs> start and you'll see boom action happening. Boom action is ready to happen. Like whatever you've been working on here, um, lovely divine feminine or your divine feminine creativity and your robust, um, um, uh, fertile energy coming, going on here. Uh, do not hold back right now. The timing is perfect. And right before that victory, remember your prayers have been heard and answered, have faith. And then lastly, we have here is clear your space with Jovia, get rid of clutter, clear your energy around you and use Feng Shui to help this entire thing along. So look at your surroundings. Um, you know, Maybe this is a perfect time to pull things out, to clean around, a cr you know, corners and stuff, um, uh, to organize, to, to look through your wardrobe. I'm seeing wardrobe right here. So maybe there's one or two people or um, that I'm talking to here, but I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing you looking in a closet and just going, don't worry that done, done, done. Just taking stuff out, taking stuff out of your wardrobe, tops, bottoms, dresses, shoes, everything, jackets, sweater, whatever that you may have that you're like, I didn't wear this in the last six months. It's taking up space out. It goes. And we're not talking about like like seasonal type stuff that I'm not counting that stuff. I'm, I'm not counting not wearing summer stuff in the winter. I'm talking about like just the normal stuff that like you would normally wear your winter clothes, but still you didn't wear for your winter wardrobe. Get rid of it. This is about getting rid of stuff you don't need is really what I'm hearing is what I'm hearing here. Earlier, I think I I think it was in this reading. I talked about the garage, maybe not. They're all kind of blending together, but this is truly about like getting rid of what you don't need, what, what doesn't belong. It's like the earth, it's like bright mother is saying, 
anything that you have in your environment that is stagnant, that isn't part of your growth is part of your, of your stasis. It's part of your stagnant energy. It's part of, you know, rooting you down and not letting you move forward. Um, and so to get rid of things in your environment that don't belong. And, and so that's in your home space. Um, if you share a house with other people, like if it's not just your stuff, if you're, you know, roommates or you're, you're, you're part of a couple them in some way, you know, try, try to talk to the other people that you live with and go, Hey, how about we work on cycling through getting rid of some stuff that just has been around for forever. We barely even notice or see anymore. That isn't really like, like do inventory, go around the house and go, okay, how do you feel about that? One to 10. How happy does that make you? Eight, eight's pretty good. How about that? Eh, two out of here. And just, and, and do that with, with, you know, a partner. If you have a partner in the house, if it's just you, boom, just do it. Go today. I'm going to work on my kitchen. Just go around the kitchen. How much, how does this make me feel? feel, just do inventory. If it doesn't, if it doesn't give you the real feels, then out of here. And that way you'll see, you'll make all this room for new stuff and the flow of energy of creativity can come in that much more without, you know, the, the literal and the figuratively, like the figurative dust bunnies in our lives. Okay. Okay. And the more you get rid of, the more space you have for new, for new energy. So if you're, if you're any kind of, of hoarding of anything, time to release. There's always more that can come in. Always more that can come in. Okay. Moving on to the hidden world. Oracle. Love this Oracle. The hidden world's Oracle. Wow, this is a really intense, very, um, really, very intensely positive, great, fiery type of energy we're getting here. I'm really excited to get to the tarot, actually. Super excited to get to the tarot. Okay, feeling it, feeling it right here. What do we have here? The Dawn Watcher, caretaker, guardian, support. Oh, I love, you know, I actually haven't, I don't think I've ever pulled this card. Um, this is card number 13. This is also the, the date of the of the new moon coming in up in March. Um, I, I have pulled the Dawn Watcher in her other oracle, the Dragon Fate Oracle, um, a bazillion times. She's definitely somebody who who I work with very closely. This is actually the first time that that she's come out um, for me in this deck, believe it or not. I've had this deck probably at least eight to 10 months. Um, but I, I do a thing with my Oracle and my tarot. I don't look at all the cards, even though I'll connect to them and everything. But um, I like surprises and it's hard to surprise me. So, um, so I won't look at all the cards of a deck. Anyway, the Dawn Watcher, card number 13, Caretaker, Guardian, Support. Let's get into the Dawn Watcher, card number 13. There we go. Okay. Oh, this is your chance to full to fully realize the beauty and potential of a new day. We cannot always see that we are watched over. We cannot always find within us the belief that we matter and are cared for by the universe. But if we could see with the eyes of the spirit, we would see there are precious beings all about us who will show up each day and watch over us. They do not interfere, but if we reach out and ask for their help, we may catch a precious glimpse of them within the clouds of the dawn sky, their faces loving and caring, assuring us that although we feel alone and small, we are always looked after and there is always a deeper purpose at play within our lives. And we have something unique and precious to offer the world. Definitely. Each of us do. Each of us, each of us have our own key to the greater locks that need to be unlocked for us all, you know? So as one rises and awakens and connects and creates that ripples through everything and it's all connected. Oh goodness. <laughs> 
your soul belongs to the greater universe of which it is part and therefore the universe is closely watching you to to ensure you will have the support you need in this moment on this day know that there are watchers ensuring you will continue on this journey so true Take a moment this day amidst all that is demanding your attention and pulling you this way and that. And imagine a dawn, a reset, a chance to start with love surrounding you. And know that the watcher is there gazing at you with infinite love and compassion. Be reassured that the soul has a plan and that the universe has a mission and that you are part of this glorious unfolding. And illumination, I am watched over by loving and supportive beings. Oh my God. Oh, my heart. Yeah. Okay. So, oh my goodness. So, not only are we being told now is the right time, go for it. You have all the tools, confidence is your key, spread your wings victory i mean all of this is saying you know the whole time you have had support you this like look at this vast open you know the sky and how beautiful it is and it's true we can look into the clouds and see and see the beings that watch over us i have pictures of them to be honest um i'll put a link to this to my article on medium that shows you my very the very first dragon that ever like really showed um themselves to me his my guardian to call my guardian dragon came on seven seven of 17. i didn't know what i was seeing when i was looking into the sky it took me about a week and some guidance to go back and look at those pictures and see what i felt and trust me you'll see it too it's it's mind blowing. So this isn't figuratively that you could actually see in the sky or in nature. They don't specify in nature, but you can actually see in nature um, when you have come to a certain understanding that that our that our um, reality is constantly shifting and the beings and the of higher dimensions and 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 um gaia herself shifts to show us things that we need to see at certain times and energies come through nature at certain times for us to and not for all to see but for you to see when you're meant to see those things but some things we can actually take pictures of and show other people or hand to them and say do you see this and i have many many examples that have come to me since my awakening that are other things within the thing that you think that it is and and you can connect to that so our very sky the atmosphere and the way that the clouds form and what can impress themselves in and through the clouds to show themselves to us so we can literally see it is also real and so this is talking so the dawn watcher is talking about um um knowing that you are not alone knowing that you've been cared for and supported and 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 you can look back like i talked about doing inventory with feng shui you can look back and do some inventory in your life when you know maybe the shit really hit the fan in certain ways and then what happened to come in and help and lift things up or to make it easier or whatever even if it didn't fix everything it certainly was like wow this is exactly what i needed right now you know or or this person came with this thing that i needed right now or or the person somebody said or i heard a song that was just like well, i was wondering about something and a song just came on like these things are not coincidences they're not random they're not nothing is random nothing is random not a timestamp on an email not you know going left instead of going right and running into somebody you haven't seen in 20 years you think that's random that's not fucking random that is absolute synchronicity precisely you being guided in a certain way at a certain time and even through tragedy and and accidents and broken bones sometimes you'll come out of the other side and go i really needed that i was really supported in that i really learned some stuff there this connected me to this that connected me to this it was a catalyst for this and oh my god that was 
the seed. And the whole time, you don't know how supported you are through the entire thing. Trust me. <laughs> okay, if I forget to put that, that link in this video, please somebody remind me. All right, you guys, let's get into this. Let's get into the tarot portion here. And again, a little review. We are going spirit. We're going with our five pointed star with tech in the middle. Uh, so spirit, air, then tech, then earth, then fire. We have our six cards we're getting with this uh, this deck with the light seers. That is the light seers tarot. Um, oh, we got our first card. Ace of Cups for our spirit, um, our spirit element and beginning here. Wow, that is no joke. Spirit with the Ace of Cups, gotta love it, gotta love it. Okay, next card for air, Three of Cups. Next card for water, the Tower. Next card for Earth, the Star. And next, oh, actually did this again. Okay, we're gonna leave this like this. Next card is for tech, queen of cups. And next card, this one right here is fire, eight of wands. Okay. <laughs> the tech one is like, it's skipped. So it's supposed to go uh, spirit, air, water, tech, fire, uh, sorry, earth fire, um, but I pulled them differently, but that's okay. That's exactly what needed to come out. Okay. So, and I'm hearing, even if they came out in reverse, we're going right side up, but to keep note. So the two that came out in, um, in reverse, um, was okay. Well, let's start at the top. Okay. Sorry. The ace of cups is our spirit card. Three of cups that came out in reverse but we're going with it and for it in um, uh, straight up is the three of cups for our air position, for our water position, the tower. I've been seeing this card a lot lately. <laughs> and for our tech position, we have queen of cups for our tech position. For our earth position, we have the star. And for our fire position, we have the eight of wands. Oh yeah, this came out in reverse too, but um, sorry, that is in reverse right now. Sorry, showed it to you in reverse. Eight of wands um, in reverse, but we're going straight up with it. So just to pay attention, the ones that came out in reverse with three of cup, queen of cups, and three of wands, we have two threes. We have the tower and the star. And we start with the ace of cups. Ace of cups for our spirit position. So let me just tap in here real quick. Okay, so I'm hearing, as you've seen, love has been a big component of love and support. Guidance has been um, a big component of this, being confident, um, taking bold action, unconditional love, creation, all this stuff. Ace of Cups coming in with this energy, literally showing, literally pointing to our heart chakras and saying we really, really need to um, tap in with the unconditional love within us for ourselves um, and really feel it from here, really feel the love, really tap in with our heart chakras. Um, a meditation that I put out just in the last couple of weeks that is coming to me, that's body love and connecting with your guardian angel would definitely be, is what's coming through again. I know I mentioned it before mentioning it again, um, just because that's just, I'm literally being shown the thumbnail of my video. <laughs> 
pretty simple to figure out these messages um, for me. So um, Ace of Cups is talking about heart chakra energy, um, internal self-love. So you can feel the love of Mother Gaia and any other type of healing that you're being guided to get into, to work on, to do any kind of um, energy healing, working with um, somebody like me that can tap in with your physical body, really um, tell you what's going on with the with your energy. If there's um, energetic parasites that need to be removed, and lots most people have them, um, so don't feel like it's you know, a you know like you did anything wrong to have some energetic parasite or to be, you know, riddled with negative energy. Like so many of us, I mean, I was chronically ill. I was super, super, super sick at one point in my life because I had taken on so much negative energy my whole life being what I am, a medical medium, a psychic, physical empath, um, and a natural born energy healer. And not knowing that I was those things, I was just soaking and absorbing negative energy that was really, that literally made me chronically ill um, with what's called fibromyalgia. But the truth of the matter was, is that it was all energy trapped in my body, making me and put me, putting me in extra and horrible pain. Pain. horrible pain it was super severe horrible fatigue like I was the most severe client or or uh patient that my doctors had and I had five specialists I was on 10 different medications I was extremely fucked up okay like I'm not not I mean it would be it's like impossible for people who know me in my second life to attribute that type of energy and illness to me but trust me a lot of people saw it um most of my life 40 years was spent this way until I woke up and understood what the was going on so trust me when i say no matter what kind of you know horrible chronic condition that you may have that keeps you in extreme pain that keeps you from enjoying life anything like that you can overcome with with love through love that's what we that's what we do here and and how to heal and and from a place of of not um you know coming from a place of ang anger or madness or whatever about your condition by coming from a place of love okay and then three of cups three of cups um in our air position here you know it's pretty simple i mean we talked about um where are those cards at uh just being connected, having support um, is what we have here. Being connected, having support, um, opening up with unconditional love to others, um, maybe even mending fences, reaching out if you feel like if somebody's been on your mind, um, maybe reaching out, reaching out or just um, being open to, to more connections coming in. Um, okay, uh, and then the tower in our water position, the tower, the tower always means big time change. Um, uh, also epiphanies and things like this. So here I'm seeing that we have that we're just like, we're like this little, this little squirrel that's like, what's going on? And something just coming in very, um, very intensely. Um, I'm not, I mean, it, it very well could be like, you know, massive change or even, even uh, having to do with um, changing jobs or career or where you live. Um, somebody leaving the, in, in, that's leaving your environment somebody coming into your environment things like this um but you knowing too this is just divinely synchronistic exactly the way it has to be like super magical like i'm feeling like you you're just being like holy shit this is actually happening like this is real right now like just so other like you never would have taken your brain there kind of thing like what 
<laughs> kind of a situation, um, which is really exciting, really, really fun to think about. Um, so I'm hearing prepare. I'm hearing prepare your space because you never know what's going to happen, who's going to show up, what's going to go down. You want to be like, feel good about your surroundings all the time. Like it's just an interesting energy with this. It's like, here I am, you know, kind of like, and, uh, and so this whole thing with self love and creation and stuff will keep you in this like really open energy to like, not, not like you might be overwhelmed by it and might come rushing through. It's interesting. It's like all this electricity with the tower, but it's the water position. And it's like, it's like, it might it just feel like this river coming through your life and changing everything kind of. Kind of situation okay and then with tech we have the queen of cups queen of cups with tech okay really quickly i'm kind of hearing like even like there could be sadness around technology or specifically social media um and like just it being a maybe a maybe it's been a negative um situation for you maybe it's just hard for you to connect that way or maybe there's been just through technology through social interactions or social um social media in different ways that it's made you feel more bad than good um and that's happened to me before i'm just like and that's happened to a lot of people obviously where social media has made you feel more bad than good and this is about assessing what that means this is what I'm getting with this right now. It's like, where does social media and what are you connected to with social media that you're that you've thought about leaving, that it feels toxic, that that you kind of you're watching people or you know, even stalking old, you know, people that you've been um, or you feel that they're doing that to you that you've been connected with or you've had to block people or you feel like people are ignoring you on social media it's just not feeling good anymore um uh, if you've thought about leaving certain platforms you may want to just pull the trigger on that and leave the, those fl platforms if you're not if it's not really enriching you in some way and anytime you dive into that it's making you feel bad. This is saying, really think about what you need to do to heal all aspects of your life and what energies you're connected to and what needs to go, including social media. And conversely, on the other side of that, what kind, what kind of social media or platforms or businesses or whatever that would be great you like this would be awesome instead in place of that you could put your energy to that would actually be good for you or you have a feeling that it might so maybe leaving facebook for medium would be a good way to go still social you're still reading you're still inter interacting but it's a very different vibration just just as an example I am connected to Facebook, but I'm literally never active on there. And it kind of bums me out when like any kind of um, trainings and stuff with other people, it's like, it's all Facebook, Facebook, Facebook connected. Um, I'm always just kind of like, well, I don't really like getting into Facebook and, and being in that space. Um, so there's some things to, to reconcile there um, for ourselves and just what we're connected to but to pay attention to this please okay and then next we have the star with in our earth in our earth position let me just tap in here So with the earth position, just with like the, the normal earth signs and, and ways that earth is, is very grounded, very logical, very um, methodical, very responsible, very hardworking, very 
um, you know, feet on the grounds and, you know, maybe don't get super excited about, you know, little things so much and, and um, needs more evidence to, um, to spark or whatever. But what's coming in here with this star for me and right now what I'm feeling is that there's this like sense of lift up and and out and up and and into a, a totally different space like you're gonna instead of it feeling weird the spiritual the metaphysical the angels the archangels the dragons the fae that maybe in another place in time you'd be like this is looney tunes talk to be talking of of angels and archangels excuse me and fairies and all this that um, a normal person would think is crazy to believe in. Well, again, it's about perspective. And the perspective of the awoken one is that all of that does exist. And that the, 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 the grounded, so to go from, you can still be very grounded and still believe in the impossible, the impossible, believe in magic, believe in those beautiful things that exist that, that from a time where a small child, we are told that they don't exist <clears throat> or that only crazy people believe in these things and they don't actually see anything or their people are con men or con women trying to get you to feel a certain thing or whatever. Trust me, it does me no this way or that way for you to believe in fairies or archangels or angels or any of that stuff. I put this forth because I know this to be true. And the more that you bring this into your world and the more that you allow and you open up for that for it, like like the um the Dawn Watcher said, you may not know that they're there, but they've always been there. You've always been supported. At some point, you'll be able to feel it. And maybe at some point, you'll be able to see it. But to know it, to feel it is, is not that difficult. Once you decide that, you, that, that it isn't just you and you have enough evidence around you to show you that. Okay. And eight of wands, eight of wands, um, with our fire positions, a lot of fire, a lot of wands, a lot of magic, a lot of sparkle, a lot of excitement, a lot of fireworks, a lot of, oh man, this card, man, this reading, um, whoo, uh, a lot of coming, I'm hearing coming together. This eight is the infinity symbol, of course. Um, I have to be a little partial to, but what this is saying with our, with our eight of wands is, so much soul connection energy so much so much um you know because that fire is our is our fire is energy and energy is life and life force so this is talking about um i'm seeing like over and over and over and over and over and over and over again eight 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 the the infinity symbol again and again and again and fire and fire and fire and what this is telling me over and over again is the connections through and to um the divine to your infinite the reason why my name is infinity and why my I was my spirit name is infinity is to um help evoke the magic of the infinite within all of us to help people remember you are infinite it is my name but you are infinite and um and so this eight of wands is like you are infinite you remember who you are remember your fire remember your soul your connections you know we did get told about about um uh You know, connecting with you know, obviously Gaia, the natural world. I think it was another read where it was heavy with the Akashic, but this is this isn't so much like it is about that, but it is about it is about um, remembering that spark, that fire, that inside of you. It's almost like this is like feel this it right here and feel all of the energy coming in to do that kind of thing um, inside of you. Um, and the fire, let's take this as our first, as our first, oh, 
whoa. Uh, <laughs> this is the eight of fire, eight of wands, the same card that I'm talking about right now. Oh my God, I'm so hot. Oh my God. Okay. So I was going to put that with our first card for the Ace of Cups, but I was told, no, this is for this. This is eight on eight. Oh my God. This is eight on eight, eight of fire, eight of fire. Oh my God. And eight of fire, um, sense of, it says events coming at a fast, uh, at a fast pace delays are over many things happening at once just so much fire so much energy so much information so much of this like electric creativity like love energy oh there goes another card four of water is going to go on top now we're getting into it four of water for our top for our spirit card uh ten of fire for our air three of earth for our water the dreamer the full card for earth and oh there's our tech card going in last okay whatever out of order once again page of air for our um queen of cups in with tech so let's see here four of water um so four of water in angel tarot, that's what we look like. And the little blurb here at the bottom, missing an opportunity, discontentment or boredom, open your eyes to the possibilities. And this was our first card, which was ace of water. And ace, and that was telling us like heart center, chakra, healing. Remember all of this? And four of water is saying, um, you know, yeah, if you've been discontent, if you've been um, not feeling right, your energy is off, like whatever it needs to happen, or you're just like, I feel like I'm blocked a little bit or energy. Four of water is coming in to say it's time to take action in that sense. You know, imagine the, again, imagine the possibilities of how Good you can feel. I mean, you just heard a little bit of my story, how I went from being super sick to super a healer now and um, what can be done there. Okay. And then 10 of fire over the three of cups, 10 of fire. So 10 of wands over the three of, of cups, too much work, accept help from others. Life is out of balance, stress related health concerns. So, um, and this was like just having support, support on both sides. So uh, what I'm feeling with this is when it comes to, if we're dealing with a uh, back to the health, to the health theme um, here that, that, uh, or just not paying attention to your own body, your own wellness, and, and maybe needing support with that, maybe needing somebody else or other people, maybe, you know, calling on, is that right now? okay, maybe calling on, um, on another to, um, to help you through sorting things out and prioritizing your life. Um, and then, the tower with the three of earth, power of creativity, recognition for very quality work, a team player. So three of earth coming in with the tower. So this is basically saying, you know, yeah, whatever is coming in with this super intense energy, that's going to be this boom change. It's pro most likely going to be um, um, dealing with some type of something to do with creativity, something to do with your talents and being creative um, or ushering you deeper into that. Somebody coming in to really revere and recognize your talents and creativity possibly also could be part of this big boom moment that you're just like, I can't believe this is happening. Can't believe this is happening. Um, let's go over here to Queen of Cups with the Page of Air, challenging information, the laser or change in plans, truth behind truth delivered without tact. Well, it's kind of like what we were talking about social media. Truth delivered without tact is definitely social media energy. Um, challenging information, definitely social media energy. Um, uh, and sometimes, yeah, you can get onto social media and it completely change your energy and change your plans and what you're feeling. And people can really get, you know, like in the riptide of that. So this is saying, you know, so really challenge, you know, like you've been, we, we are all, but think about how tech in the form of, 
of social media and how that's been challenging, how it can be toxic, how it can be truth that is, you know, cutting, even if it's truth or just stuff about the world that you don't need to see. Um, not to say to stick your head in the ground, but sometimes when we go on social media, we're just open to way too much shit coming into our lives and into our worlds and into our energy fields. And we just need to cut it off and say enough is enough this is where i'm drawing some boundaries here okay and then the star remember that you know getting that you know being grounded but we're getting that information from above coming in with the fool the dreamer card so this is this is the fool card in angel tarot which is the dreamer a leap of faith follow your dreams unexpected opportunities that comes from opening yourself up to the impossible right from saying that this this is possible this amazing magic is possible there are there are these amazing beautiful divine beings the dawn watcher our ascended masters our archangels our our angels our our very next to us uh guardian angels that are with us that are going to be with us as we go forward and take this leap of faith and start something new it's just this this reading is really awesome i'm so glad this is the third and final reading super exciting and then again eight of fire with eight of fire what can i say guys it's just super intense energy coming through like explosive it's just like explosive energy um creative energy love energy healing energy if you pick this if you pick this um read you most likely have done already a shit ton of work you've probably are already pretty deep in your spiritual path um or you're ready to pop and all of this is just going to come flooding in or you've made some really um serious decisions about your life recently or or you will be you will be <laughs> um this is all gonna pop asap okay you guys wow Thank you so much for being here, for, for being here with it, uh, to receive these messages with this reading. I want to thank all of our divine counterparts who work and speak through me. It's been amazing getting these readings for the divine feminine. This is the last one. Um, I want to thank you again for being here, beautiful soul. Please like this video if you've watched it. Um, please share it if you know people who would enjoy it. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss my videos. And please comment. Let me know how this resonated for you um where this you know hits your hits your little points for you um sparks your your fire so to speak and i will see you soon bye for now guys